in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane. Flying high, I emerge through the flames. Have no fear, I'm here, so stand back. Melanin, activate the name, it's super black. In the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane. Flying high, I emerge through the flames. Have no fear, I'm here, so stand back. Melanin, activate the name, it's super black. Uh, imagine that, a future that's super black. Long as your skin brown, your superpowers intact. What would your powers be? Just hope it ain't super whack. Spatial manipulation, create a portal that's black. Maybe just super speed, time travel to run it back. Or cheat manipulation to keep my spirit intact. As I encounter evils the world face, demons the world makes. I needed the world to stay. Rest in peace to Chad, what they killed all the Black Panthers. Told us white lies, I still marvel at black answers. Suits in DC, pray it lead to a civil war. It ain't no justice league. What's the need to be civil for? Propel like the juggernaut, it's clear, ain't no stopping. This. The world in grave danger, who can stop the apocalypse? They killed all the heroes, the new ones don't really care But if you need me, put your fist up in the air Yeah, in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane Flying high, I emerge through the flames Have no fear, I'm here, so stand back Melanin, activate the name, it's super black In the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane Flying high, I emerge through the flames. Have no fear, I'm here, so stand back. Melanin, activate the name of Super Black. Whoo! Welcome back to another episode. Thursday, 9 p.m. Well, 10 after. Anyway, uh, welcome to another episode of Blurred's Eye View. I'm your host, Chris Fury, Man on the Wall. Uh, if you love what you're seeing, show your love on the YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. Go follow us on Instagram, and you'll find the link tree in the bio. You can follow us, well, everywhere, including always press record uh, on your Amazon or Roku device. But without any further ado, let's get this party started. Let's bring it in. Our weapons master, my second in command, Lady Mandalore. Well, hello. Good evening, everyone, everywhere, all at once. <laughs> that, all, <laughs> all of that. All of that. So for those who I, I wish... I want. Streamyard, I want you to do something for me. I want you, I want Streamyard to allow me the access to record an item and stop, and then record it on the same link. I got ideas. Uh, so, uh, what's going on, man? <laughs> I, I, it, it's it's my first week at the new job. Oh, that's first right. Week at the new job. Yeah. Right. You did say you did say you were. Uh, Culling the herd, Baking. as it were, vacating yes. the premises. And... Yes, um, <laughs> yeah, it's all right. I remember them. It's my old. It's my job before the one that I just left. So it was, you know the folks. Know you, you you know the layout. <laughs> that's that's always a plus. That's always yeah. a plus. We yeah. have our griot the horror. She watches the horror movies, so you don't have to. Uh, what's going on, lady? Big by what's heart. up? What's up? <laughs> How are y'all doing? And congratulations, Lady Man Lore. Getting back at old job, your new job. As long as you're yes. happy, I'm here for it. That's I'm that paid, is. so That's yes. Yeah. <laughs> Look here. Look here. Everything's died down. It's been about a week since the slam again. Chart chair McGeddon, uh, yeah, Alabama and Will Sweet is Tea walking party. around with his folding chair. So, yeah, that part. I, ne I needed, I needed cinematic. I forgot cinematic assassin was taking his vacation this week, and I'm like, yeah. the one person I needed to demonstrate how the cocking of the hat and shooting it off. <laughs> oh, no, we can start demonstrating the next Tuesday, too, because this is timeless. <laughs> this I got point, a folding chair, it, it's but a, it's I have one in the car, I have two in the back right there. Oh, like, okay. Wait, okay. is this a secret? Is this a secret club that nobody? <laughs> Listen, we ready. We stay ready. And it, like we're I said, mine's in the car, so I stay ready. Let's go. Yeah, really. Stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. <laughs> oh, very own. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're mute. Wait, you're muted. Wait, you're muted. Okay. There's, there's you three know, reasons, because I, I don't have a folded chair. I have an Obi. Oh. <laughs> Listen, that's even better. You got a Jedi. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, well, he 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 learned to swing on people, so I don't know where he got that from. <laughs> <laughs> He's swinging on everybody. Oh Listen, my god! His we, daddy makes Jehovah's Witness cops and professional neighbors, and neighbors and everyone. There you, know, everybody, uh, you You thought uh, that he was I, I got, It was funny. I got I got told it's like your child swings on people. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not mad. Not take my blood. <laughs> not take my blood. What? 
I mean, we like the dark night. We have cookies over here, so you know. Listen, air. Yeah, cheer fools every cheer from Saturday lessons every Saturday. Instructor Hill Spawn. Hill Spawn. He's, he's the new dust operator. He's he like the, he is the sit fool of cheer fool. So you might want to yes. pay attention. That was crazy. Yo, <laughs> watching his he's, videos. He's he's got a he's got a niche. He might there be on to something. He's on to oh, something, definitely. Oh, the le- the chair lessons. I was like, yeah, yeah, you're right. From a defensive standpoint, right? you guys stick with the, you guys stick with the light side, right? He's like, he's like, okay, so if the, I curva- the chair, curvature I of the, the, the the curvature of the backrest and the, the boom, mm-hmm. the slide, the boom. I'm like, you know what? That, you, got, you got to know your power swing. Your power swings, your power shots, mm-hmm. side steps, and everything else. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we have a special guest with us tonight. His name is Marcus. V Jardim. Uh, he is here to talk about his new book and his Kickstarter campaign about Toussaint Louveter. And let me tell you, I, I want some of this action. We're going to bring in Fight. Marcus. Marcus. <laughs> hey. Hello. Welcome. We are going to talk about this book in a minute in your Kickstarter because this is such. I love what's going on. I, I'm, I'm catching a bit of a trend. You know, we have seen it with the Harriet Tubman Vampire Hunter, or Demon Slayer, vampire, uh, Harriet Tubman or Demon Slayer. Now we got yeah. uh, Toussaint hunting vampire. I, I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm it, it, and it's teaching you history at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lovecraft Country. Uh, so <laughs> I'm just saying this is very cool. Uh, but how's it going, my guy? Uh, thank you. Yeah, um, I'm very happy for the opportunity you guys gave me to be here to be able to talk about my comic book. To be honest, I'm a little nervous because you know I'm not like. Oh, oh we'll take care. What's up? We'll take care of that. We'll take care. We'll be alright. We'll be cool. Be cool. Be straight. We ain't gonna let you do nothing or say nothing wild unless you want to, and it's good for views. And then you get more views for your Kickstarter. So let's do it. Let's do it. So. (laughs) So. There's been a couple things in the news that's been jumping off, which uh, I can uh, honestly say I was a little bit surprised and glad at the same time. Uh, so uh, why don't we talk about a bit of the news? So, uh, you know, as we all know that we lost Lance Reddick earlier this year, he was also he was kind of the man in everything. Uh, he was also the voice of uh, Zavala in Destiny. Mm-hmm. And uh, it has just been announced today that Silver Throat himself, Keith David, will be taking over that role. Good choice. I couldn't think of a better person. Yeah, who else are you going to get? Yeah. Why? Why would you leave why? Yourself? <laughs> I mean, you want you need you need comfort and commanding. It's either him or Dennis Halesburg. And I'm like, that's the only two people I can think of. <laughs> only yeah, two I, people that matter. Right. That part. I feel too too safe with Dennis Halesburg. Yeah. I, I feel presidential. He is a little I, too presidential. I, I, yeah, I don't he, know. I think because he is. Either. That's why. Yeah. As a guardian, as a guardian, I feel safe with my with my Titan saying, Are you good? Are you in good hands? I am now. <laughs> I mean, that's because Dennis Haysbird, he he's 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 pre Obama. He was pre Obama yeah. yeah. before Obama. It is yeah. Like, yeah. I definitely say that all the time. It was so just like, oh, like he was, he was, I'm like, yo, Jack Bauer protected the hell out of him. You know, Man, so, it was hmm. it was a, it was a time to be had. Uh also in other news, uh, unfortunately, we lost uh another person this week uh johnny hartwick who plays the voice of dale gribble on king of the hill he passed away no details as to what happened he was 64 yeah 64 64 years old uh it passed it's it's like a lot of legends uh uh, people that's in the mainstay of, of a lot of stuff that grew up and watching you know he was on the entire except for one episode of king of the hill he was on the. He helped write and do the entire run of King of the Hill. Uh, they wow. were in talks of doing. I think it's like two hundred and fifty-eight episodes. He did two hundred and fifty-seven. Mm. So uh, there were talks of the re of a reboot happening. Well, not a reboot. I guess you can call it a continuation. Um, 
no word on if he was doing the voice again or even if he is if the lines were recorded so there's no word on that just yet so uh just lost peewee jesus right. oh, oh, God. Yep, oh wow why'd you remind me oh you got it. I mean, yeah dale taught dale taught me that being paranoid was completely normal yes <laughs> yes <laughs> Although uh, John Redcorn, the whole ordeal with John Redcorn, that's always funny to me. They're just uh, <laughs> mine, you know. She, you know, Susie gets a lot of headaches, and you know that. I'm thankful for that John Redcorn. I'm thankful. For <laughs> and everybody oh, stares yeah, at him yeah, like, yeah, uh, if he if he only only knew. <laughs> poor John Redcorn. Mm, mm, mm. If he poor only Dale. Knew. Poor Dale, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in, in the streaming wars, that's getting ready to continue on, I guess. Disney mm. Plus is now the latest streaming service to crack down on their password sharing starting next year. Um, well, let me, price on, $80. Let, me pray, let me strap on this uh, Luffy jacket. Um, Yo, B, I'm about to sail a high seas a lot, right along with y'all. I've been a proponent against it, but y'all bugging. Y'all there's bugging. there's bugging. always room on the boat. There's it's always true. room on the boat. It's just I don't like that. I hate that they're doing that. <laughs> I really hate that they keep they keep changing stuff like that. I really it's no yeah. necessary reason for it. And another yeah. and, and, and speaking of Disney, speaking what of people who now? Really, okay, so what he said, so what Bob Iger said this time isn't bad. He actually was saying something that made sense prior to what he said before. He says he's more concentrated on taking the properties they currently have and making them with more quality, not quantity. I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. No shit, my guy. The fu- what? All you gotta say is how many times did he go to a PR person? You might want to pay your people first okay before you even think about doing no something. Shit, my guy. What? It, it's funny. It's funny he says that, and yet the, all the people on Shriker's looking at him like, yeah, so you know, just uh. One, one little problem that you know you might want to solve, you know, the same people that kind of made you money, you may, might want to make sure they're taken care of first. Yeah, you know what happens when you raise the quality of something, you also increased its costs, mm-hmm. sir. Mm. But you know, they don't, you know, for somebody that gets paid seventy eight thousand dollars a day, I wish Damn. number I wish. number five highest paid CEO in the U.S. I wish. Just, I just need. Wow, that's really all I need. Mm-hmm. That's insane. <laughs> it's crazy, but it, it, I'm not. But it's not surprised. It said they, they see what Netflix is doing. Netflix is slowly turning a profit with this password sharing. So Disney and Hulu, they, I'm mean, sorry, I'm sorry, Disney slash Hulu, uh, Dulu will probably be turning around doing the same thing. I wouldn't be. I look, it's only a matter of time. However, <laughs> it is. you're right. You're right, Verb. That is corporate mm-hmm. talk. Because mm-hmm. here's the thing, here's the thing. You first started off putting your foot, your whole foot and ass in your mouth uh, by stating that you're starve out your artists and your writers or whatever. Mm-hmm. In which Ron Perlman <laughs> rightfully... That was Clay Morrow, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was Clay Morrow, yeah. That was Clay rightfully, Morrow, that was anarchy. That was yeah. not... <laughs> he literally <laughs> retorted in, the, in a very <laughs> kind, like <light> way. <laughs> but for him to sit up there and say that and then turn around and say you're going to be concentrated more on quality. Oh dude, in order to concentrate on your quality, you shouldn't overwork yeah. and underpay your people. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason why actually there's a reason why Star Wars and uh, uh Clone Wars and all those all those shows and then the Avengers and, and all the MCU stuff worked up into a and it still works, don't get me wrong, but it worked up to a certain point. Let's start because see you've seen you've seen something and you're like oh we got to have more of that we got to have more of that yes do we want more of course but we don't want it in this in the sake of the quality of it all there's a reason why love and thunder didn't do as well as should as it should have the vfx was bad and the storyline was hmm, i mean we kind of knew part of the story but it was just, it was kind of forced is is that the best way to say it Mm. Yeah. It was- yeah. I completely. I was 
you know, okay, so sometimes we have things that go on in the background, um, and I was fully typing and half listening, so I apologize. No, <laughs> no, I was looking at the chat. I'm like looking at the chat. I'm looking at the computer. I'm looking at you. I need a twin. Like, is what I mean. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. I need, so, I need my my sec, my second in command over here. Yes, I mean, but it's it's fair to say that well, you know we obviously seen what happened with VFX artists and and what's going on there. We've seen what happens when you take a writing, take the writing from a movie or a show and see how it lacks. You kind of you miss certain marks because you're trying to meet a need. You don't have to. Def There's nobody you have to beat. You've won us. Now mm -hmm. you just need to keep our attention. And I was I'm, I'm still on board with you making your shows for Disney Plus, whether it's in Star Wars or Marvel. I'm all I'm all on board for that. Yeah. Just take your time. But that's the but again, but in order to take your time, you must pay your people. Exactly. Pay them, pay them well. Give them dividends. Give them give them this give them a piece of the Scrooge McDuck vault that you dip in on a daily basis. Somewhere Scrooge McDuck is shaking his head. It's like you should have had a vault. Um <laughs> you should and then you can pay people. You should have had a vault. Um I don't he it's he probably does, he just doesn't swim in it. Uh, I think he just has. I think he's got that. Well, that Breaking Bad. He just has a room full of money. He just goes in and stares at, smell, smells the air, and then walks yep. back out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm missing ten million dollars. Uh, <laughs> so I think they can do better. Um, it's commendable that uh, it's not even commendable. It's just common sense for him to say something like that. It's yep. what we've always wanted. That's we don't. How many years has yeah. Marvel been half-assing it? Yeah. Just on the Marvel end, not even talking about. I said it, and I, I mean, pretty wrong, but ooh. I mean, COVID aside, we'll let that one slide. We understand yeah. that part. That was that was out of your control. But, but they had them but stories. Even then, yeah, but even they, they then, had them stories laid up. Yeah, but in, and even then, you know, you were like, "All right, we're under the gun. What do we do? What do we do? Don't force the issue." But it's it's interesting that we did not know how bad the situation was behind Disney with the with the voice artists, the visual effects people. We did not know about the strenuous deadlines they were under and the burnouts and the everything. I mean, we did not know about this. I mean, imagine that all this has been happening since the beginning and we're just finding out now. So who knows how long that that fire has been burning until it just Till it did, till it hit a critical point. You better believe it was happening before all that time. Yeah. At, I mean, at, at least since probably Avengers. You know that it's happening for a while. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I can agree. It's just in game has been kind of I mean, I I expected I expected the next chapter. You know, they did say, hey, this next chapter is an introduction. We're ending one chapter, we're starting a new one with new character. That's fine. Mm -hmm. That's fine. You know, you went a different direction. That's fine too. You had a couple pluses in that in that venue. Miss Marvel is one of them. You know, yeah. what if is another one? You know, WandaVision, another one. Loki, fantastic. You know, so these, you know, Secret Invasion is not horrible, at least in my eyes. It was but, it's, it's the experimental phase. It's like, okay, it, it's very we, yeah. we, we had we had a whole nice little lineup for for, uh, for 10 plus years of safe, safe but profitable movies. So now it's like, okay, we gotta go. We gotta go to the experimental phase. We gotta go to the. We're not sure if this is gonna work, or we're not sure if you're not gonna like it. But we're just gonna, you know, be that dizzy machine to keep cranking it out, keep cranking it out. And and I'll even give Kira credit on this because she was the first person that said it. It was the fact that you keep on going, you keep on doing another after another after another after another, and you give you don't give the you don't give the audience time to breathe. And that's the reason why it's been crappy. So I will give Kira credit for that. I will agree with her that, yes, I will give you credit. Mark this down. August the 10th. Oh, okay. That sounded <laughs> way too crushingly. I will mark this down. I agree with Kira. August the 10th, 9.29 p.m. I will agree. I will say I agree with her. We have it on record. I, I've made a note of the date and time. There it is. 
Thank you, gonna, sir. If anything, we keep receipts around here on this ship. Right. Uh, so, but then it's fine. It's fine, you know. Even in, with the case of seeking invasion, I could see where they wanted to go with it. Mm -hmm. Personally, I would have reached out back to the Russo brothers. I mean, in fact, I think they showed interest in wanting to uh, to do that but because you've already you've done the espionage spy thing, so it shouldn't have been a problem the second time around. I think Netflix threw more money at them. I think yeah, I think, well, I think they were tired of them interfering with them telling the stories. Mm -hmm. I think that's been a major part. And I, I honestly I wanted I'd love to see the difference between when Marvel was its own individual property and then when Disney actually fully got involved with things. Cause I think that's when things were like, okay, well, y'all were cute when y'all were by yourselves doing all this. Now we're I need y'all to, to put out or get out. The content Everything. I need you yeah, this, I yeah. Need. And it's like, no, build your story. You have enough. I'm okay with secret invasion, and I'm just using this as an example. I'm okay with it not being like the book. I'm okay mm -hmm. with that. You don't want to burn out and say, Oh, it's all the heroes again. No, let's let's yeah. let's deal with some of this other stuff, right? You know, and put it let's put this political intrigue into the play and play and mm -hmm. back to the spy and the espionage and solving trying to solve what was going on with Nick Fury. What, that was fine. Groundwork, doing yeah. groundwork. Yeah, yeah let, let's. That was fine. Him being married, that's fine. I have the nice twist. Matter of mm -hmm. fact, her and Gaia, badasses. Mm -hmm. I was fine with all of that until you killed Talos. You didn't. You you killed Talos and you killed Maria <sighs> Hill and you did. Mm -hmm. It was no payoff there. You, that you, killed, you I killed wanted payoff, <laughs> especially for Maria for me. Yeah, from, from, like, she put in that time. She was even on Agents of Shield and other stuff. Like she put in that time, yeah. and y'all did I, it, nothing for her. And no, I think she it might, didn't make the, any sense. The way that they did it, I'm like, maybe she's coming back in Marvels, and maybe they didn't kill her off. I'm, like that. I'm, I'm like, I don't I am still with you. Yeah, said, it oh, makes you no know, sense. I'm like, you, you left her, and then Talos, and it was like, yo, I was actually liking Talos even in Captain Marvel because mm -hmm. he was he had a funny edge to him, and then yeah. watching him. He was he was funny in he's funny in uh no way home mm -hmm. and then here he's serious I and mean, the conversations they have and i'm like ben mendelshaw number one can act his ass off he, he so i'm yeah. not taking so i was like these conversations those were great scenes there were some really great talking he points a, he was an opposite character next to fury that's the thing yeah. about that's what made it, i mean the, his whole standout thing was he, I mean, when we first when he saw him in Captain Marvel, it's like, I'm not really a bad guy. He's like, he's eventually, and he, it's kind of funny, he's in there and says, he's like, you know, eventually at all this, we're going to wind up being friends as, yeah. a, as he's getting kicked out of the ship. <laughs> that was the <laughs> funny part. And he, again, it, he's one of those characters that I thought would still be around just because we've gotten, in, you know, like, like most characters, we get invested in them. We yeah. got invested in Talos. We got invested in Gaia. We got invested... Um, we got invested, really, for the most part, in uh, in Agora. We we got invested in him. I just can't get past the whole thing of saying you pimped us, Fury. You know, I can't get past the British accent. That's killing me. You he pimped us. Fury. I mean, he did though. He did. He did. I mean, he's a spy. It's what he does. You know, and I can let that slide because that's what happens. So yeah. it's, the, it's the spy game. You you, you kind of playing chess and check not checkers here. So. But yes, Disney, we uh, yes, uh, Bob Iger, we completely agree with you in the fact that you need to uh, get back to making quality content. But you might want to address the growing protests that are outside the magical kingdom in other places right now. That is, yeah. you know, constantly growing. <laughs> yeah, the fact that you like... have no sources for your content that you'd like to improve upon, you mm -hmm. need people to do that, boo. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to shit on your writers. You don't want to mm -hmm. do that. Um, they're the one that create the content. They're the one that actually get get what you're what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Let them work. Just pay them. Figure and out the streaming shit, please. Actually, you know what they need? Kevin Feige needs to do the same thing Gunn did to Warner Brothers. You need to put up a line and a gun line and say you don't cross it. Yeah. You can do whatever you want on this side, but on the, but on our side, you do not interfere. Yeah, Feige should be doing the same. Feige should be doing the same thing with Disney. Anything Marvel related, you cannot get in. You cannot interfere with. Disney will not let that happen. Yeah, it's too late. Sad part. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say Whatever Disney will screaming. not let that happen. That is a big ass money machine. Mm. They got too much power at this point. 
Well, see, oh, the, thing is, the thing is, and when you say that, I remember when Age of Ultron came out. And at the time, I think this was the third Avengers film, correct? I think that, yeah, Age of Ultron yeah, yeah. was the third Avengers film. Yeah. And what, or was it the second? Was Civil War? Second. Or? Yeah, second. It's it was the second. second. I'm sorry. Civil War came after that. Yeah. Or Captain America was third. Okay, that's why. Um, mm-hmm. And at its time, was it, it was its weakest performing Avengers film. Mm-hmm. However, the when they said it's our weakest performing film, but it made a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. Over a billion dollars. That's when we should know it was greed. We should know it was greed right there. We yeah. Know. You know, one of those things is just like, uh, wait a minute, guy. Uh, that's not exactly how that works. You know, I feel like that was more of a flex, though. Yeah. I, I feel like he was saying, oh, we, we've made a mere pittance of what we're accustomed to. Like, I feel like he was trying to. I, I, it's, it's like you're telling it, it's, it's still, it's not a good sound either way, but. It's, it just sounds, it it's sounds a flex, like, but it, it's a flex, but it's a not, it's not a good. It just sounds like somebody yeah. who has too much money that whines. What? Who, what, what did Age of Eltron make there, Jeeves? We've made a billion dollars, sir. A billion? How long has this been going on? What How long wrong? has it been in movies? <laughs> a billion. A billion. Sleeping Beauty, sir. Sleeping Beauty was over 30 years ago. Pish posh. Pish posh. <laughs> I'm counting dollar bills over here. Why is there dollar bills in my stack? <laughs> you know. I see a that one in a 20. How dare you? <laughs> But I, I really do. In in the case of the writers and the actors, I hope what they, I hope what they're looking for, they get. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we are getting ready to hit that dry spell. P- people don't know. They y'all don't know. Winter is coming. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, great season for comics. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna be a great season for rewatch. Rain. It's gonna be dry. <sighs> If you see mm-hmm. Hollywood shuffle, it's like it's like Keenan Ivory Wayne is what mm-hmm. I his, uh, make a comeback for real. Bring his his wave juice. He, he, it's gonna be gone. It's gonna be mm. gone. Y'all gonna be wishing, wishing. Y'all gonna see more reality shows than y'all can shake a stick at. And it's gonna make you sick. Mm-hmm. Don't know, don't know what you got till it's gone. Probably this time next year. And yep. game shows. Oh, I, I, I I give it to this oh, time next year. Them, oh, the reality reality shows gonna come out the woodwork. You ain't lying. God, it's the age of flavor of love all over again. Oh, <laughs> Dang, not the first, not the snore. Put it back. Put it back. Flavor of love. How, how you feeling over there, Mark? Is good? <laughs> well, man, like, uh, I, to be honest, I haven't been like following the news since I launched the Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. So you guys have more over this. I just saw recently, like. You know, everybody was talking about Alabama, Alabama, and then I started seeing like memes and stuff. I'm like, whoa! And I'm like, okay, I'm done with news. I'm back to. It. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, this is what I missed. I'll, I'll, I'll take that away. <laughs> but uh, I definitely support the the protests of writers and artists. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. We we need you know, without writers, really, people were complaining. Oh, well, they can just no. You don't understand. Without the writers, you mm-hmm. have no show. You have no you film. Shit. You have no content. Thank, thank you, Lenny. Yeah. You don't got. I don't shit. understand that. You ain't got shit. You got shit. Yeah. It's like it's, it's not that hard to to understand. You, Lenny said it. You don't have shit. You, you can't make up anything because you're not going to write it. Exactly. You want the it ain't gonna be. It's, I mean, yeah. it's, it's not they, gonna, gonna bank on Terminator writing it. That's what they're gonna bank. Uh, all on. I gotta say, yeah. say, you know, it's bad when Jeopardy has to go on reruns. That That's it. You know it's bad. Oh, only thing they can do is you can show, you can show off how well your memory is at that point. That's about it. And they don't have a lot of reruns because um, mm-hmm. Trebek unfortunately just passed like within right. like one year. Tre- so Trebek yeah. was witty and he, he ain't got that much. <laughs> <Lord>. <laughs> It's going to be a fun time. Yeah, it is. Mm. So we're going to take a little break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk to our guest, Marcus Jardin. We're going to talk about Toussaint, history of Toussaint, Louboutin. We're going to talk about this new Kickstarter, this book, this art, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love this stuff. I I do. I do love seeing stuff with history mixed in with our nerddom. It just, it, it does my heart proud because you know hey. how do you 
Mm-hmm. One, this is how you introduce more people. But we, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that after, after this break. Running low on energy, long days and even longer nights, tired of all the other energy drinks and bars promise you a lot and never delivering, need to make it through work, but want a product that can keep up with your busy lifestyle? Want no longer? Try Chef's Chocolate Salty Balls. The balls that are so smooth and with a load of nutrients and vitamins to really get you up and bouncing off the walls. Made with all natural ingredients and healthy junk to satisfy even the pickiest eater. Chef's Chocolate Salty Balls are sold everywhere where you buy your junk. And now for those who want that extra kick in the butt, come Chef's Heavy Duty Chocolate Salty Balls with 120% more caffeine than the leading brand. Disclaimer, this product has not been approved by the FDA or World Health Association. Warning, this product is not intended for consumption by children, elderly people, or women who are pregnant or may become pregnant. You might even get pregnant. This just in. Feeling groggy in the morning? Coffee just can't give you that pep in the step that you're looking for? Try Pop Starts for that great get up and go that adults need. Pop Starts has the vitamin and nutrients that only grown ups can partake in, and with flavors such as tossed salad and scrambled eggs, and Jack Daniels and Bud Light flavors to start your day or end it, there's nothing better to wake up to unless you count that depressing cubicle job. Well, anyway, try Pop Starts today. Pop Starts is not part of the Kellogg's Corporation. Pop Starts could give you diarrhea. Pop Starts are not found in your local grocery store. <laughs> Yeah, there's something wrong with us. Um, that's <laughs> nothing wrong with us. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. It's, uh, wrong. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Uh, we have our guest here tonight, Marcus V. Uh, he has this amazing Kickstarter in this amazing book, and I'm gonna show a few of the pages as well uh, about Toussaint Louverture. Uh, he is a historical figure. Uh, he was part of the slave uh, uh uprising in haiti uh he also was the he made himself leader of the uh hispaniola at that mm-hmm. time but he put a nice little spin on it so marcus let's talk about this book and i'm gonna put him roll up the uh, the uh, image right quick but let's talk about this book man because dude it looks amazing mm-hmm. Here's the uh, special cover that we have right here, which, by the way, is nice. <laughs> Veteran artist. Uh, uh, how, do you spell, how do you spell? How do you say his name? Uh, yep. The bell. The bell. Oh, the bell yeah. Okay. My own. So, I can. so this, but, but yeah, this is a dope yeah. cover. This is just one of the covers. But mm-hmm. this cover here is, and he was asking me, he said, use the one, the special one for the promo. But when I looked at the other ones, I'm like, the other ones look great. But this one is boss. I like this. Mm-hmm. It's giving me Blade vibes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so let's talk about, let's talk about this book, man. Uh, how did you come up with this idea? Yes. Okay. So. Um, your sound, your sound went out a little bit. Yeah, that cover showed, um was illustrated by Yavel Gichette. He's a Haitian American artist. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a, a veteran in the in the in the industry. Uh, he illustrated what works for Marvel, and mm-hmm. he comments Black Panther, uh, Black Lightning, Batman, Superman, Aquaman. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm a newcomer to comics. This is my first comic book ever, so I'm very happy that. Uh, he gave me the opportunity to to talk about my story, and mm-hmm. uh, so once I talked to him about the story, he was uh, excited to work with me. This is uh, the first time that he had the opportunity to draw to us. Uh, uh, so I'm and um. But, so, and, uh, growing up, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I, um, they did, like, 
from I'm from Brazil, and um, when I came to the United States, it was a bit difficult for me to adapt because um, you know I didn't know the, I didn't know any word in English, mm -hmm. and I saw they really like the Brazilian soccer team, you know, and you know I really appreciated the love and I you know interacted with them, had good relations. But for, fast forward into college, um, I'm really into history, mm -hmm. and I I specialize in Afro-Brazilian history. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was in college, uh, that's what I uh, did my research on. Um, I was under the the guidance of uh, Professor um, Kelly Jackson. She I don't know if you guys heard about her, but she was in a in a documentary Roots. Mm -hmm. um, I'm guessing you guys are familiar mm -hmm. with that. It, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I focus on Afro-Brazilian resistance, you know, during the transatlantic uh, slave period and for my research paper. And there was a, a big rebellion, the biggest rebellion and urban rebellion mm -hmm. in the Americas was was in Brazil in Salvador Bahia and it was inspired by the Haitian Revolution and um, they had like a necklaces they had like images of Toussaint and the, you know references to Haiti right mm -hmm. um, Salvador Bahia is the considered the Afro-Brazilian capital you know and uh, Brazil has the biggest uh, black population after Nigeria and so it was a big, it was a big thing. So I was very um, impressed. So I started like seeing how the how Haiti has such a huge impact mm -hmm. in, in history. And one of the things, you know, because prior to going to college, you know, I, I, I in public school they will always teach about mostly white American history. It was always uh, George Washington. Uh, mm -hmm. Abraham Lincoln, uh, awesome guy who wanted to liberate the, you know, the enslaved people, and then, you know, World War II liberate the world. Uh, brief section: Martin Luther King had a dream, and mm -hmm. present times, and then repeat. You know, so <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that's yeah. exactly all right. That's exactly how they say it. That's exactly yeah, that's, how they teach it. That's, yeah, that's the cult for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, as somebody who is into, into history, um, this kind of bothered me. So that's why when I'm in college, I was in college, I decided to, you know, study different things, open my mind, you know, to things that interest me. Mm -hmm. This was the topic that interested me. And uh, another thing that bothers me is how Haiti is often uh, neg negatively portrayed in the media. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, 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 mm -hmm. yeah over and over and you know i think well yeah so then i went to and then after i graduated college i went to do my master's in social work so i put the history aside for a bit because i had to focus on mental health you know and then during the pandemic you know everybody was at home and and you know, I was at home like everybody else, and I had time to think. And I always, I always been a storyteller. I always really like telling telling stories. I just kind of put that aside to focus in school, you know, because mm -hmm. it was a lot of hard work. And for me, um, you know, I had to put uh, actual work to keep up with with, um, with the papers and and all that. So, so then I had the idea. Uh, you know, I like telling stories and I guess it just came to me I just had like the the, the spirit of you know I incorporated the spirit of creativity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I decided to you know get into comics and then I thought which story can I tell that you know I could like introduce people to to a history topic that they might not be so familiar with right, right. I thought the perfect you know, and I'm so, I'm seeing the era. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, Black Panther, and I'm starting to see there's more um, diversity. You know, there still needs to be work mm -hmm. in, in 
diversity in the superhero uh, universe. Right. And I thought, I just came to, you know, I just thought, how about make a story about a real life uh, black, you know, hero, a superhero mm -hmm. in a way, because so Saint Novator defeated Napoleon's army. Mm -hmm. you know, he led, he, he led, um, you know, everybody's talking about this new Napoleon movie. Um, it seems <laughs> cool, but nobody's talking about how Toussaint, you know, and the Haitians defeated Napoleon army. But not only that, the, the British and the Spanish Empire. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, my editor, uh, the editor that I work with, she's Haitian American. And this is somebody that I know personally. So, you know, I, I had a, a talk with her and then we're like, let's make a, you know, this story together with mm -hmm. So we created like a fictional story about a, a, you know, a revolution against vampires, both references to the Haitian, to the Haitian revolution mm -hmm. and, Haitian, you know, and Haitian history in general, in a way to not only entertain readers through a horror slash, slash action story, but also, you know, introduce them to this uh, important topic that I, I believe it's important for people to know. Haiti right. is the, uh, mm -hmm. the the world's first uh, black republic, and they what they achieved in history, uh, you know, is no small uh, achievement and right. important. So mm -hmm. for so this so this is like our so for our viewers and for our listeners, uh, this is our education part of, of of the show. We 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 gonna give you some education. That's our, our <laughs> encourage, educate, entertain. That's our thing. Mm -hmm. Toussaint Louverture was a, led a successful slave revolt, emancipated the slaves in the French colony of Saint Domingue, or otherwise known as Haiti. Uh, a formidable military leader, he turned the colony into a country groomed or governed by former black slaves as a nominal French protectorate and made himself ruler of the entire island of Hispaniola. Mm -hmm. People like him, people like Marcus Garvey, people like Harriet Tubman. The stories that you don't really get to hear about, about people who helped, who fought back, who, you know, don't have their, the battle for New Orleans, exactly. And mm -hmm. if you're watching, uh, if you're watching live, the Kickstarter is up on the stay on the page and it's also in the chat. So go show your love at the Kickstarter. Uh, but when you see, when you read about the stories about us, about black and brown people who really did fight back. Who really did try to make a difference and really did make a difference not try to they did make a difference you know but it gets buried under under unfortunately oh, yeah, it, gets <laughs> it gets buried because they don't they don't want that next generation to learn you know what it is that we contributed what our people contributed <coughs> to the cause to the to, mm -hmm. to the betterment of our people and mm -hmm. like and like you said marcus they always do paint Haiti in certain parts of Africa and just anything that involves us in black and brown people in negative connotations. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, people I've seen actual I have friends that have gone to Africa, even lived over there and say, yeah, it's nothing like what they're showing. <laughs> it's it's it, you know there's people that gone to Haiti it's like it's nothing what they're showing it's it's nothing like this you know people in South America nothing what they're showing or how they paint it on on media you mm -hmm. know it's, it's nothing like that so mm -hmm. it, it 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 does my heart proud when I see projects you know and and in this crew here we're a big proponent of Lovecraft Country shout out mm -hmm. to Misha, Misha Green because that was a one way of saying hey let's tell this story of science fiction let's tell the story of horror and adventure and all this other stuff but let's put some historical con uh, context into it you know and it's going to make people talk it's going to make people look up these these information this information and, and find all this stuff and find out why wow th i didn't know this happened wow i didn't know that went down wow i didn't know this person existed you oh, know just, just sprinkle sprinkle some history sprinkle 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 yeah. sprinkle it's a just a little bit of truth, a little mm -hmm. bit of truth. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. Mm -hmm. That's why. That's why I was. That's why when I was looking at that, I was like, okay, because I I do know a little bit about I do know a little bit about Haiti. I'm like, like and I like MJ. What you've done is just the fact that you're taking history, and I was like, okay, vampires. I thought about it the first time I saw. It, I said, Valen vampires. 
And then I looked more into it. I was like, I like what he did with this because <laughs> it, it, it's not, not for one. The art is freaking amazing. I am a, I am a big proponent mm -hmm. on art on art, especially in comics because comic. I mean, for, uh, words can only do so much, but put words with art. You got it made, and and shout out to the multiple artists that are that are associated with your project because man i mean just like just like chris pointed out just showing up there the cover will immediately grab people's attention before they even read the words because you'll see a guy you i mean you literally see a guy and then you look at the words and going wait a minute what, what? and that's all you need that's the hook the hook that brings them in and then they want to then they want to learn more and like you said you know when it's when you see countries like Haiti, when you see uh, Africa or Sierra Leone or Freetown or just any of these countries that, you know, people look at that and go, oh, I was watching on National Geographic. It's so bad that you, you people are so backwards. No, it is com like Chris said, it is completely different when you get to see it through your own eyes. And there's a there's a there is such a freaking melting pot of history, of culture, of just things that are buried under BS. I know I shouldn't be cussing, but things that are buried under bullshit. That's what because, it is. <laughs> uh, because that's the thing. They don't they don't want to talk about, oh, slaves rebelled? Yes. And won. <laughs> and and governed better than you did. I mean, it, it just it is amazing that like like we said you sprinkle a little bit of history into a written story and you'll get not only people thinking, but you get people wanting more. And I think, I think like you kind of, you have that with this. That's the reason why I'm just like, Oh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where you go with this just because the narrative is just, it, it's grabbing. I mean, but then again, it's it also vampires will grab anybody, but a black dude fighting vampires <laughs> and, he, and you're making him the hero of the story. Cool. That's I'm a different. Not, that's I'm a whole not, different ball game you get going. Yeah. I, I just hope the vampires, first of all, are the French. Okay. <laughs> I, I hope very much. That. Um, second of all, to, to y'all's point, like yo, like I was a history major in, in in college, so I got to be able to see some of the different stories of how we are strong and how mm -hmm. that's never taught mm -hmm. in school because they're mm -hmm. always going to teach the non-violence of everything, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I like, even as I'm at my school now, when we do black history, I almost never say, I don't want y'all to focus on Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks. You're going to hear about them all the time. Yeah. We need to focus about every person that you're not gonna hear about, okay? I'm here to show you that. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about this comic. And because I'm Haitian American too, when I first saw this, I was like, this is so dope. This yeah. is so amazing. This gets, con this, this gets conversations going. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Go ahead, Lynn. I, I mean, the art, first of all, if I, if you didn't have a title or anything on there, I'd still be picking up this book. The art by itself is spectacular. Shout out to the, the colors, the, the line, the, the whoever... Everybody that's involved in this is mm -hmm. imperative to this comic book. Um, yes. It's mm -hmm. it's the luck that the luck that you have is is be is so you have a lot of luck. You have a lot of luck, and I, I wish mm -hmm. you more because I want to see more of mm -hmm. this. And I, I like I like the fact that this could be something that is told or given to kids in different class well maybe not kids <laughs> um but high school, she, she high school kids of a certain age yeah <laughs> those kind of kids those kind of kids not the teeny babies the, the bigger babies <laughs> you can't have the four-year-olds um, running around <laughs> well maybe you can i mean i can't promise that my 11 when she becomes 11 year old that she might not you know i mean be months. on the lookout for the french y'all vampires <laughs> listen <laughs> exactly it listen Real. That boy will be real suspect. <laughs> no, no. Like, where did but, you learn to wield a sword? You know, <laughs> I look at that Jedi yeah. classes. Quality. 
this is this is really really good man i i gotta say the art the, the wording grabbed me just the fact that the the it's all there mm-hmm. and we don't get enough of this mm-hmm. it says a lot you know mm-hmm. so i thank you <laughs> number one mm-hmm. uh i hope you have more in the, in the tank because just because it's fun you know, I and and I and I when I see stuff like this because and we've seen something in, seven years ago, uh, where it was Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Yeah, yeah right. it's cheesy. They didn't, it's, it's they cheesy didn't go far enough. enough. Yeah, it, they did <laughs> exactly. They didn't, they didn't go far enough. They did yeah. go far enough, but I was like, I like the idea mm-hmm. of them doing that. You know, and now we have Harriet Tubman Demon Slayer. Mm-hmm. You know, and now we have. Uh, Toussaint Louverture who's hunting, yeah. who's hunting vampires and, and freeing the people. And it's just, yo, I like this, man. <laughs> like, I don't know how I was like, putting it. We want to see, we, it, it would be nice to have a, a, um, a story where we win. We don't that get part. that. Yeah, we part. don't get that. Like, can we, can I get one? Can I get one? Just to be told like it's okay for us to win sometimes aside from us fighting amongst one another having that narrative be something that's drilled in my head constantly i'd mm-hmm. like to see us win and this is that i mean when vampires you, yeah i mean when especially and when you say that lady mandalore i think about i think about what just happened in, in montgomery mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. this was a situation where we won we seen someone of our kind being ostracized, being beaten and being assaulted, and mm-hmm. we did something about it, you know. So it, it, it feels good to have that win and, to, and for people to say, Hey, you know, we aren't what the media portrays us to be. Mm-hmm. That you know, we were never like that. Like, there was a reason why Black Panthers existed, there was a reason why all these factions that really was trying to look out for their neighborhood, their community, their country, you mm-hmm. know, to say, Hey, this, this matters. You know, we matter, you know, that's all good that you have your history, but so do we, we have ours yeah. and we want to hear about it. And this is a good way. Like this right here, this book is a fantastic way. And I find that when you, when you spoon feed people, not just kids, but people, when you spoon feed people certain bits of information, it mm-hmm. makes them, you know, if it grabs them, if it's inclined in them, it grabs them, it makes them want to go and say, I need to know more. Like right. this story was amazing, but I need to know more about this this actual person. Like, yeah, like what, what, and what is actually true? Like, right. okay, yeah. I know obviously he's not a vampire hunter, but what, what makes this particular person in history so. Why do I need to know about this person? What did they actually do? Is there something more? Like that's that's what pulled me into libraries as a kid, um, to to go and search. I had wonderful teachers. Um, oh, but, sorry. I wasn't born in Haiti, but no, I'm, I'm, oh, girl, I'm bit, no. I, I will. I'll, I do. I do love black history. <laughs> love I, it. I, yeah. I, I love yeah. black history. Like wherever you can get it, <laughs> give it to yeah. me. Please. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's yeah. the whole purpose of the story. As you know, it's not it's not a history um, book or a history comic. It's mm-hmm. into you know action slash horror, but with historical references. So you know, and then hopefully, and spark the interest of people to learn more about it. Right. It's yeah. a gateway. It's a gateway. Yeah, that, right, right. It's a gateway. It sparks I mean, curiosity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I mentioned I mentioned Lovecraft Country. It's literally, mm-hmm. it's a gateway. You know, you found something that was based in historic fact in every episode. So here you have a character, the lead character, who is mm. an actual figure, an actual human being who did cause, a, you know, cause an uprising and free slaves mm-hmm. and gave them a country that they can build on, build upon, you know, and, and beat other armies that these other armies, like you mentioned, Napoleon. All these are like you mean to tell me the French beat beat everybody, everybody? No, no, nah, nah, Napoleon had some, <laughs> Napoleon had some L's. <laughs> he had some L's. Everybody except for the Haitians. <laughs> I was just about to say, yep. I must say the Haitians. He, got that, he caught that big L. And I and I only mm-hmm. know that. Rest in peace, Miss Lockley. 
but when I was in high school mm-hmm. and she taught history, she was my history teacher. And, and just like you said, Marcus, the way they teach history in school, they, mm-hmm. they got these in sections. And then when it comes to black history, Malcolm, Marcus, Rosa. They yes. stick, they stick the Marcus. That's only if you get Malcolm. Oh, Frederick. Yeah. Frederick. Or Frederick. Frederick. Yeah. Uh, again, if you get, if you get Frederick, you'll get Sojourner sometime before you get Frederick. That's yeah. fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, it, you know. And Martin Luther King is just like a small section. And it yeah. was like, mm-hmm. That part. Yeah. That part. You're not getting the uprisings at all. No. Yeah. Whether it be home, whether it be stateside or not, you're not getting that. Right. Mm-hmm. So this is why I, this is what I enjoy yeah. about it. Yeah. And it's like Martin Luther King was more than just, he was, a, he was more than just, uh, you know, a dreamer. He did uh, a lot more than that one speech. On that. Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yes. Yes. Get a exactly lot. That. There's a whole other speech. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there's a whole other speech that I don't think many folks are ready to hear, but he, or he allowed to hear, or even allowed to hear. that speech in school. <laughs> not, not, he not he was ready after the after after everything. He was just like, you know what? I messed up. This ain't it. We not need the to one do on, not the one on capitalism. <laughs> Listen, because when it's talked about uniting the poor, mm-hmm. okay, <laughs> they was he was they was okay about him talking about okay. Don't beat up black people. But then when you talk about uniting the poor, stop going people too far. thinking that you are different with, from black with. folks because poor is poor. Look, look what Fred Hampton was doing. He, oh. was, he was he was uniting people of different yeah. races and say, hey, look, we are really all in the same boat. Mm-hmm. You know, and when that when that bigger faction was like, uh oh, they saw they saw a problem <laughs> happen. It's like, wait a second, they're this. I always loved that movie Ants. I always loved that Ant movie where he was like, "Do you do you understand what happens if the ants learn that they, they the ants learn there are more of them than us? Yeah, <laughs> it will turn on us." Like they they literally tell you the number of of the rich versus poor every day. They're the one percent, one or two percent. Mm-hmm. That says a lot. <laughs> like that yeah. says that, that means we have the numbers. It was just <laughs> just only goes to show you one just one day. <laughs> so. So, like I said before, you're right. So, like I said before, if you're watching live, the the uh, Kickstarter is in the chat. Uh, it's also here live on the screen. So, you want to go over and check out that Kickstarter. Uh, show your love. Get some of that action. Get this Toussaint Louboutin, the Battle for New Orleans, number one. Mm-hmm. Um, are you going to be doing more books like this? Me? Yes. Uh, I have. Oh, he said it quick, too. I love it. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> what you talking yeah. about, man? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's the goal. I mean, um, I have other stories too, but uh, I wanted to this one to be the first one because of the, you know, I think it's a very important history and uh, social message behind it. But mm-hmm. I have other stories uh, planned out. I just, you know, I just have to uh, get through the Kickstarter really too. Because, you know, um, I, I appreciate, you know, I, I'm very happy get the feedback for, uh, for the art because, uh, you know, I put in a, a lot of hard work. This this comic this this comic book has been over a year in the making. Um, this is mostly due because uh, uh, before finding this team, it took me a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I worked with, uh, I tried working with artists before who couldn't um, illustrate a black characters properly, mm-hmm. unfortunately, and uh, and this was something that really is it's a big thing for me, you know, f- not only for me, but f- for, for my uh, Haitian editor as well. So, you know, it took some time to to be able to find the team. I'm glad that I did. Um, mm-hmm. My main artist uh, is, from, is from Brazil. Uh, his, his name is uh, Gabriel, Gabriel Jardim. Uh, he does a lot of uh, work uh, depicting, you know, afro Brazil. <laughs> Art and comic um, the colorist. Um, it was his, uh, Bree Souza. It was his recommendation uh, because I I told him that I want a colorist that could um proper proper, proper sorry properly color uh, black characters. Uh, one of the things for me is because you know um, people of African origin they're not just one color like one you know dark shade that some artists out there do 
Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, I know this one. She's very good at that. She's Afro-Brazilian. And I believe like a mix of indigenous as well. Because, you know, I like to give like a, if you if you take a close closer look at all my character, all the characters, they have, you know, like different shades. Mm -hmm. and stuff. So, yeah. So then, you know, so, so, so this is something that, that, you know, was very important to do. So I appreciate the feedback uh, for the art because it did uh, take time to get it right and then to find the right team and, and months, you know, of, of hard work it was a lot of hard work that we put into this. And yeah, this is definitely something like this type of, you know, you know, this kind of like uh, playing, you know, fiction with history. This is definitely like my thing. Uh, and, you know, this is just the beginning of it. Y'all really nailed this. Really? Right. You, you, I'm just looking at a lot of details. Yeah. Uh, if you can keep that cover real quick, uh, you yeah. see uh, the woman uh, with the with the um, with the white uh, clothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So her name is Madame Marie, and she's a she's a voodoo priestess. Not that yep. Madame Marie. Oh, oh that. <laughs> the voodoo priestess. Mm -hmm. I want to call it voodoo, but voodoo priestess. Vo yeah. Voodoo, but yeah. Yeah. So she. Um, you know, because usually in, 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 you know, voodoo is often depicted in a very uh, dark and negative way, you know, like, mm -hmm. like creepy. And I wanted to, you know, give a different, you know, diff show it for what it really is, you know. So, you know, she's a, uh, so she, you know, so this was very important for us to do as well. And, um, and this was also a way for me to channel, um, some of my personal beliefs because uh, uh, I do believe in, in, you know, like, you know, people in Brazil, there's also, we have our own, um, you know, beliefs as well that, that mm -hmm. are often similar to voodoo or, or, mm -hmm. or Santari and things like that. And yeah. I've been called like devil worshiper before and, and evil and things like that, you know? So this was also a way for me to channel that in a way to, to show mm -hmm. you know that it's not this evil creepy thing that I mean I don't you know the, every story has a place you know and and it could work but for my problem is when the the narrative is too repetitive right yeah 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 exactly I mean at, when you say when at, you said man no go ahead lady Mandalore. go ahead I, I was gonna say I was just gonna say that, that Christianity was considered evil at one point too so yeah mm -hmm. What do you? It, it, that means nothing. It's all about whoever controls the, like you said, the narrative. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get across. Yeah, yeah. I can appreciate a really good artist because I'm looking at te I'm looking at different skin tones. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at different hair textures. Definition. Def definition. It just that alone, in seeing that because we're big X Men fans and we love Storm and we and she's just now just now getting drawn with her hair being textured just now mm -hmm. you know but when you say when you said uh, madame marie and i'm like not madame marie laveau madame marie oh god you know <laughs> <laughs> oh god you know, like you know and, and so when i see you know you're bringing more actual historical figures to the forefront and giving them some because, like I said, you spoon feed this to the people; they're they're gonna want to know more. Mm -hmm. they're, they're gonna want to know more, you know. So, yeah, this is dope. This is really dope, and I, I can't get over the the coloring and the texturing because it's actually good. The shading's good. <laughs> I'm a sucker for art and writing. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I agree. It's that. It's that. Like I said, for me, it, I always go back to the art. And I know, like you said, you know, trying to find artists that can do ethnic people correctly that's the, that's all for some odd reason you would think that for people of color it's easier you would think that if the artist was a person of color it's like hey try yourself you know it's 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 you're looking, at, you're, you're looking at five different shades of black people already yeah, yeah. just on this I cover know. alone so it's just like some somebody got it down although i do like the fact of how dracula looks the top hat 
<laughs> the swag with the top. That's just, man, that's just the, with the I mean, then again, that's the smoothness. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I was going to sit there and say the fact that how you had Dracula, because again, depiction of Dracula, we always see an older, older white guy that looks like he's about 10 seconds from croaking. That's usually Dracula. But to usually, but to see Dracula as a more, more regal, a little bit of New Orleans slash Haitian style to it, I was like, I like that. Just because you can tell it has, you can tell it has some Haitian influences. You can tell that it has some voodoo influences on it, and it's not overly done. That's the thing that I love about that. It's it it's it's enough, and it's not oh, extra. True. If that makes sense. It is. Mm-hmm. It's very smooth. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in love with these covers. I'm not gonna. I'm in love with these covers, my guy. It and feels I'm, very modern and at the same time a throwback. Mm-hmm. And when we were going yeah. through the when we were going through the pictures, just seeing the influence of red and blue all the time, mm-hmm. like that's the liminal of the Haitian colors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Call it, call yeah. it, Grio, call it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I I like it. That's why that's yeah. why I kind of I just I just just going off this story alone, just seeing that that right yes. there is that smooth. That yes. is that is that is with all with all the swagger of of a of a of a of a demon of the night. Yep. And all and he does he's like I don't need I don't need nothing fancy. I just need my hat. I just need my cape. And I just need my army. And look how smooth I can make it work. And All this is something that could be adapted. Like, mm-hmm. I was if you say, look at the way that it's drawn, it could mm-hmm. definitely be adapted. You can now, we can now start fan casting right now. Right. Yeah. It looks like I a thought- storyboard for a movie. Mm-hmm. Yes. It does. Yeah. Yes. A fan cast, though. Uh, Uh-oh. Um, oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. you're here on Blur's <laughs> Eye View. Why not? Let's go for it. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. 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 Let's talk about Let's it. Do Let's it. Speak, about speak it. it into existence. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> So this I is the encouraging. This is the encouraging part now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, because you know, like people have have been uh, 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 messaging me saying, "Oh, I can't wait for a live adaptation of this." So mm-hmm. I'm like, "Why not?" You know. So. All right. So let's start with let's start with the main uh, one. Two song. Yeah, let's start with two song. Who would you fan cast for two song? Take a guess. Oh, that that's a that's a ooh. I don't Can know. I, I, I don't know if I want to jump in that pool. <laughs> Can I get Boy, Boyega's really on the tip of my tongue right now. Yeah. Oh, he would do nah. that. Nah. He would do the hell nah. out of that though. Nah, I want him for the I want him for Dracula. You want Boyega? I could I want common for Dracula. Yeah, I, I can see that, that, that guy is giving common vibes. Yeah, because <laughs> common common can do an accent. I could see him doing Dracula. That's I can see that, but Burb said it here. He and, and they're just they're just a fan. We yeah. manifest here. We like, to do to do two songs. <laughs> who could be? Oh, good lord! Uh, an actor who who did a very famous uh, trilogy, uh, Killing Vampires. Oh, what's his name? Oh, Wesley. Wesley's yeah. not oh, oh, Wesley. Oh, you know who I'm thinking? Oh, you know who I'm thinking actually. Um, the black I don't remember his name, the black guy from and I know I hate to say the black guy, but from the black guy from the first purge. Oh, oh, uh he could do that. I gotta pull his name. I don't even remember <laughs> yes, the first purge. I have, to, I have to look, I have to look it up, but I just have to get that out there. I got you, Lainey. I'm looking now. <laughs> you looking okay, you got that one. So <laughs> yeah, I got it. I got you. I want okay. I want to say he's the same guy that um Issa um cheated on. Cheated with um an yes. Oh, oh, that yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Wait a minute, bitch. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We talking. We on the same level now. Wait, wait, wait. wait a minute. Say that. Edwin Hodge. There you go. Edwin, Edwin Hodge. Okay. Yeah, I can see him doing this. Oh, okay. So then, if we have wait, Hodges, hey, wait, that's Aldous that's not brother. his brother. That's not that's yeah, not his brother. Yeah, it's Aldous brother. Oh, okay. That's not his brother. Yeah, no, 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 on the, no, that's not on the first on the first, not the first movie, the first purge. Oh right. wait, okay. Back in, hold on, hold on. back in 2013, right? No, no, not the first, not the first movie purge. Not the, the purge. The prequel. Yeah, the first purge. The first right. purge. Oh, the, that's, okay. Yeah, that's oh, that's y'all, the, y'all, y'all are thinking of the very first movie. That yeah, is you said um, the first. Um, 
Wait, wait. That's, Yelan that's Noel. Yelan yes. Noel. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Oh, okay. I that mean, dude. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, if we talk to Hodges, then Hodges could be the vampire. Stop playing. Because I was thinking about something when you he said the bird. Yeah. <laughs> he, he definitely could do that. Yeah. All right. So coming off we, with the cast right here. So, so, <laughs> so Madam Marie Laveau. Stop it. You already know. You yeah, already know who it's it is. gonna be the queen. It's a shame that yeah. the cinematic is that Well, wait a minute. How old is she? How old is it she? It don't matter. What do you mean? She's eternal. No, she's she's tiny. About? If, she's a, if she's a young eternal, <laughs> then no. If she's if she's a wise eternal, then yes. Well, we all we'll always okay. say Angela Bassett, but if we had to pick a second. Thank you. If, okay, if I Miss Bassett, if if Queen, if, if the Queen herself Kiki, was not available, Kiki, Miss Kiki. Oh, Ooh. that would be no. Kiki, oh, done. Kiki Kiki done. Done. Kiki Palmer. What? Kiki. Oh, <laughs> with a question hey, mark. No, However, real, real Kiki talk. With real an talk. exclamation points. No, no, no. Wait, yeah. real talk. Mm. She Sorry. can embody Queen Angela too. Yeah. I'm so she get, oh, I got you She's for the shits. She's for the shits. Absolutely. <laughs> What do you guys think of uh, Viola Davis? She can do it too. She can too. She can do it it's too. It's carpet. It, it's... Yeah. Mind you, uh, Madam Marie, uh, her powers are going to grow throughout the story in uh, mm -hmm. unexpected ways. She's okay. going to be a major, right. major, uh, uh, player in the revolution. So, yes. let's, go. let's get this strike together. Uh, let's get this <laughs> come and come talk to us and Marcus. You know, they, you know, and, and we got some ideas. <laughs> I mean, or or because they're handing out waivers to these independent filmmakers. I'm just saying, a twenty four. It's ready your wheelhouse. <laughs> I'm just saying, and and mayhem could call rope. <laughs> That's Listen, like we, 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 still, we, we still we we still think that, about that man, man. That man is sitting in Phoenix right now on a typewriter, like Ben. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Wait, he's, it's the Kermit the Frog meme. Just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is I love this. I love this. But this is by far some some of the best work I've seen. And you said this is your first book, so mm -hmm. I can just imagine That's what you have coming out after yeah. that. Be honest, I'm very surprised myself. Like for the very first book, uh, to be working with such an amazing team, and um, you know, being here on a podcast with you guys, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, working with somebody, you know, you know, like your Val Guichet, who has uh, so much uh, uh, experience in comics, and mm -hmm. you know, he gave me the time to explain the story where it goes, and it was like, yeah. Uh, he agreed to be part of it because uh, yeah. I have a lot of. Uh, Twenty four never disappoints. You're right. I, mm -hmm. I have I have uh, uh, very uh, exciting stuff coming for for this story alone. You know, people people just need to give the comic book a chance. That's it. Uh, yeah. so, for, so like once again, it's in the chat. I'm going to put it in the chat again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to so put it in the chat again. I I just want to impress upon people. I was looking at the Kickstarter. I'm going to be donating. But you only have two days left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When are you going to be putting this back up in the event? And I'm not wishing this on you at all. When? When? Because I think, I think we we, as a culture, us. I'm la I'm labeling us here. We may have missed out on helping you. So, right. do you but, think you can put it back up again? There's still time. I believe. Okay, good. Okay. I, be I believe in us too. I believe in us too. Mm -hmm. uh, but I need this comic is, book. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. I want this book. Right. I, I need this comic book. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this we're, this we're, is we're, like this we're, we're, thing we're, that could be we're, we're almost halfway there. Yeah. You're yeah. Halfway Listen, there. this is the kind of thing that Otaku Noir needs to um hear about. Ooh. Girl stop. So, I mean okay. So let me uh, go while y'all talking to Marcus. Let me go ahead and send uh, this information over to Hanif. Uh, <laughs> Immediate, immediately. I'm doing okay. it right now. This, I'm doing it right now. This is the kind of book could definitely be in boxes. Yeah, should be in boxes. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Time should be in. Should I, I'll even I'll even go for and say you know what? Let third fourth graders read this. They need to learn something. Hey. Learn. 
They need to, they need to learn. If I read it and I'm like, oh, my daughter can read this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because that's, what comes, because that's what it comes down to. Because the whole the whole idea of the whole idea of comics like this is the idea to just you plant that idea of like, wait a minute, who is this individual? Yeah. As much as these kids have uh tablets and smartphones and whatnot, a simple Google search will lead them to something else. And mm -hmm. all because they saw it, they saw it in the comic. Or you know they saw they said they, they see voodoo it's like oh voodoo is voodoo is terrible let me why is it so terrible you look it up oh this ain't terrible it's <laughs> terrible for the people that that need to have it happen to them that's it's what like, I'm just saying or the bad parts happen to them I should say yeah but it's all but it's always that one thing that'll it'll it'll point them to the direction of them actually finding knowledge that's the thing finding yeah. the knowledge instead of just mm -hmm. being and instead of just being okay. told some some BS. Mm -hmm. you're, you're being told, oh, this is, oh, this is, this is evil. No, it's not because you understand According it. To who? Yeah. yeah. At the same, at the, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, MJ, go ahead. No, sorry, I don't want to talk about that. No, no, you're good, go ahead. No, no, dude, it's your time to shine. Go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you see how there's so many films uh, about Greek mythology, uh, Norse mythology. I mean, you have Thor, a superhero, mm -hmm. but then anything that's like African related, mm -hmm. uh, you know, very far in between. People, you know, yeah, yeah. Well, and, and in fact, the the uh, the Norse mythology, mm -hmm. like uh, Thor and these guys, they actually, they actually like demanded human sacrifice. Mm -hmm. While while African mythology, you know, there was no such thing. Yet, mm -hmm. the anything that's related to African mythology is spooky and evil. Mm -hmm. But anything with uh, Greek or Norse, it's uh. It's awesome, uh, Hercules, uh, Thor. Um, it's a Disney yeah. movie. Not not Listen. realizing not realizing <laughs> how how effed up their mythology really is. Listen, yeah, <laughs> Listen. in in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but, you, but, but you're right though. It's it's they they how they do. It's like if how they do certain myth, how they do African American, how they do Haitian mythology, how they do all of these other ones. It's it's when it, they always have this notation. Well. Yeah, well, if it's not if it's not Norse, if it's not Scandinavian, if it's not European, then you know it it, it has to be evil or cannibalistic. I'm like, have you even or, looked at the African of the spora? We're just uncivilized. Now, yeah, we're Listen, just now we're getting free? to the point. We're just mm -hmm. now getting to the point of seeing some of these uh, African superheroes or and touches in these base. On, on Netflix, there's one. There's another cartoon that's on Disney Plus, actually. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Super, uh, I think it's Super Four. Super, yeah, Super Four on Netflix about yeah. four young African girls. Dope. Mm -hmm. I think it's like eight episodes. Dope yeah. episodes. Uh, really fun to watch. And then the other one that's I can't think of the Kismondo. That's the mm -hmm. name of it. Kismondo. That's on Disney Plus. So also very well done. Yeah, also very well done. So. Seeing stuff like that and seeing being being represented, you know, finally, mm -hmm. you know, so these kids can see, hey, yeah, it's not just Thor. It's all cool and all. Don't get me wrong, but but tell, but tell it, but tell it true. Yeah, I'm listen, right. Greek mythology was the first hellbilly tragedy. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> right off the hip. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, you ain't wrong. You ain't wrong. That's why, and we are nothing like it, and we and we're the ones that get painted as evil, bad, and all that. Right, you're right, you're right. For black mythology yeah. is some of the black mythology and uh, uh, any other brown culture mythology has mm -hmm. some really dope stories. And mm -hmm. so, when you really so look into it, freaking many. God, I love. I fell in love. With, I fell in love with. I don't ask me how I did it. I stumbled across a Nazi the spider in elementary school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> elementary school. I stumbled across it. I, I would go to the, the library in the school and was just finding books to read. And I, found that and couldn't find another book. Once we once I left, I couldn't I could never find that book again. I I want to thank my progressive second grade teacher for whatever reason being very um, um, immersed in African culture because she actually did um, give us a few books about a Nazi spider and it, it was kid friendly um, mm -hmm. 
that's where I learned about it and I was comfortable with it. So mm -hmm. it, it's, if, they, if well, I guess if you live in New York City, you're, you're a little, you might have like a few like golden threads throughout your public school education. Um, but outside of that, that bitch was gone. Like after elementary school, there was nothing at all left. Nothing right. at all left. So oh, no, you if you get lucky enough to have edu I, like I said, I was lucky enough. I had educators. Ooh, I had a few. I had a few teachers that did not give a damn about the about the southern public education system. They sat there and said, "You are going to learn." Uh, shout out to Miss Gilchrist. You are going to learn your history. The key yeah. part, of that part was you're going to learn your history, and that's yeah. where we get to learn about the African diaspora. That's where we get to learn about. Um, you get to learn about, uh, oh, dear God, just every area. You get to learn about Mandel Muslim. You get to learn about the Moors. You get to learn about uh, uh, the fact that, you know, the, the lie. I always call it the big thing about the lie that America was the first country to liberate, uh, to abolish slavery. I'm like, no. No. <laughs> and me and, me, and, me and some about that today. <laughs> Huh? What you say, lady? Uh, no, I'm about to say, I was watching about something about today where someone said that, and I forgot who I was watching. They was like, you wouldn't count Sweden, Denmark, this, that. They said about 20 countries before America. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It, it was absolutely like, it, yeah. We, we couldn't be the first because we were that dependent upon it in order to make any that kind part. of money to become the country that, that we have because yeah. well, well, not anymore. Or that were, part, and I don't understand that. how you want to say that you were the first, even if you were, you still enslaved. Pretty much. Like, but why it, are you? You still a did it. For thank you. You did a murder. You know that's, that's, that's <laughs> like if I punch you and I'm saying, "Oh, I'm sorry, I punch you again." Oh, I'm sorry. Come on now. Yeah. Stop being honest. But that's but that's, that's but that's the lie. That's what I said. That's the lie that keeps perpetrating. That's why I'm like. Mm -hmm. The, what what they what was the thing to say? If you want if you actually want to learn actual history, read comic books. I forgot I forgot which artist said that. If you actually want to learn history, read comic books because comic books, comic books have always had a sprinkle of truth in anything that was ever said, and it led you and it led you to and it led you to what actually happened. So which that is why part, the, which is why X Men is is so important mm -hmm. to the culture. To anybody, uh -huh. anybody that has any kind of uh, liberal-minded thinking, even though I don't like that label either, it, I don't think it's, it's about it. liberal. It's about what's true. Yeah, the I facts. think I think that a lot of times, not all, because liberal sometimes is a mindset and is an opinion. But mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. now, and especially right now, in the where we are in our history and, and politics, liberal a lot of times represents truth at this point. Yeah. So I think you don't have to say liberal. Just say what open-minded. Open wow. At least at the bare minimum, open-minded. At the bare minimum, open-minded. Free just, to imagine too is. Mm -hmm. is I just I just go with it. I just go with this. I always sat there and said, "You want?" I said, "You want to know the difference between hearing something that you know is true and hearing something that you know is false? If you hear something true, you don't question it. Like if you're being told, like again, if." No one did not know about the story. Uh, again, just using uh, Marcus's Marcus's co comic story as a, as a reference. If you knew nothing about it, but you read it, immediately you're going to be immediately nine times out of ten you're intrigued. Mm -hmm. But then you think about it, it's like, wait a second, why is this dude dressed up? And of course, if you've never known, why is this black person dressed up like he's entering the French Revolution? And that's all it takes. And then that's when you get to that point, you just simply go. Oh, so this was an actual person that was based on somebody true. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, it's never questioned. It's never questioned when you can research it and find something that you've never been told before. And right. that's why I always keep on that. That's why I was saying that when it comes to education, education has always been this whole thing of whatever, whatever you want to spoon feed somebody, but you got to filter it so many times that you have to make mm -hmm. it believable. It's like it's like taking. Mm -hmm. It's like taking, it's like taking Norse mythology and giving it a Disney twist. Yeah, <laughs> one, one that's thing, what I was saying. Like, before, yeah, one thing. With, with, one, with, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, that's what I was saying. Like taking Viking mythology and turning it into a Disney movie, aka mm -hmm. Thor. Thor. Yeah. 
you, look, you did. Look at Greek. Look at Greek mythology the same way. Like uh, look how they romanticize. They literally, it was an animated Hercules movie. Yeah, but they but they had to. But look how much filtering that do. I mean, we did this. Like, do you really want to tell the story of Hercules, a guy that literally killed two sets of families? This man had two sets of families, <laughs> murdered them both. <laughs> in, in a mad rage, right? And realize what he exactly. I said that's not Hercules. That's a redneck on death. Christ. <laughs> I mean, if you take the formula that, and I mean, we're just using Disney. Disney's talk a talk the point right now. But if you mm-hmm. take what they did, mm-hmm. Iron Man, Captain America, Black Widow, the Avengers, Thor, the whole lineup. You have a group, a massive group of people who've never read a comic book who do now due to those movies because see, they're, now they're interested. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they want to know more. They want to find out more. You take that same formula and flip it on its head. I mean, it's, it's Lovecraft Country did it. You know, Disney's done it. You know, Fox did it before they got bought out with the X-Men franchise. They've all done that same formula. Now take that formula, formula, put it in book form. They're like, oh, you catching their eye. That mm-hmm. art catches your eye. Now let's read the story. And you're like, oh, this is dope. And then you find out Madame Marie Laveau is real. Toussaint Louverture mm-hmm. is real. You know, these mm-hmm. characters are real. Now I need to know. I want to find out about them now. You know, Harry Tubman, Demon Slayer. Harry Tubman, was real. I know who Harry Tubman is. And then and the kid to go look and they're like, yo, this is dope. This person was dope as fuck. There's no other way to put it. <laughs> and then when you can actually translate your antagonists in your books to history. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because like when you think about Harry Tubman, Demon Slayer, who's the demons? Why did they point them out as the demons? Tucson. That's what I said. I hope Tucson is killing the French. Yeah. Then, <laughs> once again, then it, you think about why. Mm-hmm. And they actually make real life, oh, they were that bad. Not the whitewash shit that's happening about education and history now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Have to see, I, imagine, imagine seeing the French is exactly how they see Tucson. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, how yeah. they see here's, here's, a, here's a perfect example. Besides that, there's another great example. There was a gentleman on TikTok who, you know, everybody makes Paris, France to be this romantic, this very romantic city and everything else. And he says, he says, no, 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 no. Let that me show dirty. you what Paris really looks like. <laughs> <laughs> the that revolution oh, dirty is not anybody. <laughs> yeah, right. Ooh, He's like, Lord. it's dirty as hell. It's this it's trash. It smells like trash. And it's like, whoa, wow. You know, and it is it's, it, it, it blows your mind because a lot, a lot of people, quote unquote, don't get out the house. They don't see they beyond the, the four walls. Yeah, they believe the hype. They don't see beyond the four walls. They just see what is fed to them. So why don't we take that formula of that and put it in a positive light? Like, just just take that same formula and say, hey, you like this. Wait till you get a load of this over here. And then they really can't. They really take it in. Do you? mm, I really wish that there was a way to make a smooth connection between so we've gone from movies to comics. I wish there was a way to go from comics to the library. I don't think we've figured out how to make that smooth transition because there is so I much think more information there. I mean, it's not sexy it because it's not, you know, colors and, and art, artistry and bloodbaths or whatever. Oh, you mean um, as far as like the history books, as far as. Yeah, yeah man. Okay, like if there's. If you could, if you could open up your mind to create your own images from what's written on those pages, I'm a his, I'm a bit of a history buff myself. Um, it, it's so intriguing. You get to like it. Just it it flips this switch in your brain once you real once you get a little bit of truth and you can see it written down and you have cited sources from reputable places. The news is a lie. Um, it is so <laughs> much more <laughs> intriguing to get these first person accounts of things and they're all they're lit it's out there like all of this truth is just out there for the taking the government cannot deny you like it's we're past that point now the internet is we not oh, 
Jeez, they taking books. They I'm, taking about books my, I'm about to go on my. I'm about to go on my. I'm about to say we we could do that. Yeah. They taking yeah. books out of the libraries <laughs> and all that now. Yeah, they, 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 they're they doing their damage. They're doing their damage on now. They they know where they know it. It just takes one spark. It takes one spark for somebody to be like, you know what this. Hmm. I'm gonna just go look this up for myself because it's there. Mm. But it, it's, so, it's not hard. So, it is so not hard. So, I'm so then I think you, I'm gonna read you a quick little note that uh, Otaku Noir just sent me. Oh. Yes, I heard about the comic. Definitely on our radar for future boxes. Working on a collab with Stranger Comics right now. Hey. Oh. So listen. So so Otaku Noir is definitely looking to work with you. So look out for Otaku Noir. Me? Uh, yes. 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 Bro. <laughs> so she said again. I kind of like. Well, so he I, says. So Hanif, who runs a talk, Hanif and Kim, who runs a talk oh. war, said we heard about your comic. Oh. Okay. You're definitely on their radar. Oh. Wow. Uh, they. They're. You're definitely on their radar for a future box. Oh, okay. <laughs> so. So yeah. you will be hearing from. Uh, from that crew. Uh, okay. Trust me. Yeah. You're. So everyone, <laughs> network. That's it. it, it that's all it takes. That's it. <laughs> mm. One spark, yeah, one spark, <laughs> or one hat thrown in the air. That's all it takes. You know. So I think what we have here is something, and like you said, Lady Mandalore, it's something that we have here. Say it, Obi. It's, it's something <laughs> that we have here that allows us to readily access information the internet is wide open they i'm quoting captain michael reynolds they and, and the crew from firefly they can't stop the signal they can't they can try it won't work you can't stop the signal <laughs> you can't you know so seeing this type of work from you and from people like stranger comics and everything else to put this type of tuskegee airmen that's another great book because it touches on the Tuskegee Airmen, but it talks about their their descendants, you know, the, their the children their, or their great grandchildren, I should say. And so, having these type of stories, our kids need to see that. We need to see that. You know, it, it, it opens a platform and it opens a platform for discussion to talk like like we're doing now to talk about. Hey, you'd be surprised what else this person did that they don't teach you in school. Or that they try to repress or they don't put in the history books there's tons of tons of books out there now it's going to have you're going to have a few kids saying i'm going to the library because i want to know more every time it comes around a black history month or brown history his heritage month or whatever and they hispanic heritage month and and pa, uh, pan-african everything it opens that discussion like i don't want to talk about that story about martin luther king unless it's something different that they don't want people to know or that was repressed or held back or whatever the case may be i want to talk about what Toussaint did i want to talk about what else harriet tubman did i want to talk about uh what's his name nathaniel he created the folding chair like who would have known black man created the folding chair and just that was all over the news you know <laughs> so to hear these type of stories and to hear about these historical figures who made major, major, major impacts in our lives that we don't know about helps because they can't you look what look what Florida's doing. They're we gotta we gotta stop this book. We gotta change the narrative. Why do you want to change the narrative? <laughs> you know, because and and, and and gratefully gratefully you do have a group of a generation of children who are like why would you they're thinking like why would you want to do that like what, what are you what are you hiding they're questioning it you know they're they're rebelling back they're fighting back they're like yeah yeah that doesn't make sense why would why did why change something that's true the worst <laughs> thing that you can do is tell a child is a, it's a secret mm, that's yeah. the worst thing you can do is try to hide that's something true because they will sniff that sh that stuff out. If they, if, they ban, if they ban books, read them because there's something in there they don't want you to know. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So, so I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put your Kickstarter up one more time. I uh, go check this Kickstarter out. Uh, you just got you got less than three days. It's 71 hours, I think it said. Uh, so yeah. uh, get on uh, it, y'all. 
Stop, yeah. stop fucking around. I know payday is tomorrow for some people. I, I mean, need y'all to put a blessing upon this man. My man is halfway <laughs> there. He's half, almost halfway there. Get it, get him there. Let's get him there because we want to. And like I said, Otaku Noir, they're looking forward to working with you in the future. Uh, so once again, another blessing. So you'll be hearing from Otaku Noir. Uh, but yeah, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we're going to be talking about can you stick around with us, Marcus? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. They will say that. So our last part of the show, we're talking about forgotten. We're talking about comic book cliffhangers. <laughs> yeah. We know there's a few out there that they talk about stuff, things happen in these comic books, and then they just leave it and they never revisit it. So uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to be coming back with our guest in the crew, and we're going to be talking about well, you know, these comic book cliffhangers that's kind of throwing everybody against the wall, so stay tuned. Yeah, Welcome back to Fast Money, y'all. We're getting ready to finish up the game here. Now your teammate done scored enough points. I think you just need to get one answer right to win. You ready? Ready. Okay, name a podcast. Blurred's Eye View. Who should have won that Oscar? Angela Bassett. Who did win the Oscar? Don't give a damn. Name a cartoon. Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Name a guest from question one. Carl Jones. All right, that did it. Congratulations, you won the game. Hellspawn cosplay. Now we only need a one name. Hieroglyphics. You can stop now. Josh Evans. Chase Bowman. Josh Brown. <laughs> Y'all cut the commercial. He gonna be Charlie out for a while. Blurred's Eye View. Be sure to peep the podcast on all platforms. Or stream every episode on Always Press Record TV. APR TV now downloadable on Amazon and Roku. APR TV, the power of podcasting in the palm of your hand. Get it today. So, let me fix this here. All right, there we go. Uh, we all know there. We, we all read comics. We've been around them long enough. We know what's going on. But there's also times where the story just kind of drops off. Right, uh, you, 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 they 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 bring in new writers. It's a new story arc, and the previous story never continues. They basically J.J. Abrams the whole damn thing, right? Uh, <laughs> shout out to Cinematic Assassin for kind of getting us straight on the Star Wars last part of the trilogy. It kind of makes sense now. We have just a couple, just a handful of them. Uh, let me pull up my list. We have a handful of lists. We have a handful. Now, one of the stories, and this tends to rear its ugly head from time to time, but this generally happened during the Clone Saga of Spider-Man. And that was the birth of May, May Day Parker. Or, as Mary Jane and Pete was told, the stillborn of the two. So here she is. Now, during the Clone Saga, their child was actually kidnapped by a female version of Doc o of Doctor Octopus, and was never heard from again. However, we did see versions of her in the A two version, which is her in the Spider Man suit. Uh, uh, what's the other one? Spider Man in Mary Spirit of Spider Man. Uh, your vows, I think it's Mary Your Vows or something to that effect. We've seen her in Across the Spider Verse, and we've also seen her in One Moment in Time. Those are all four versions that I have up right now. But here's the thing: these are the in One Moment of Time that was a version of Mephisto. A two and uh, the Vows storyline; those are different timelines. And of course, across the Spider Verse, well, that's a totally different timeline. But we're talking the Six One Six Universe. What happened to Mayday? Nothing. We we will never know. We'll never lost <laughs> lost in the, lost in the lost in the editing board somewhere in a Marvel office. Yeah, it, yeah or, it's, or somebody got fired or moved over to DC. Something. Uh, I can't remember who did the Clone Saga. I don't think I want to know. Uh, <laughs> but there was definitely some moments where that kind of fell off. But yeah, she was stolen at birth. All during the Clone Saga. As if the Clone Saga wasn't convoluted enough. Uh, yeah, that was pretty, pretty bad. Um, 
What about Black Panther's unexplained recovery from a brain injury? They will never explain that. Yeah. <laughs> you might as well let that one go. They will never yeah. explain that one. So, heart-shaped fruit. Heart-shaped fruit. Heart-shaped fruit. So during Christopher Priest's run, uh, it saw T'Challa abandon the mantle of Black Panther in light of his brain aneurysm. This was in order for a new Black Panther, which was Casper Cole, to take over. However, by the time the series ended by issue 62, Cole had taken on the name of White Tiger and T'Challa was back as Black Panther and it was never another mention of the brain injury. Because the run was that bad and the readers revolted. <laughs> the reader, you, have, you ever see readers all come together and just sit there and say, yeah, they said that. <laughs> they sat there and said no. <laughs> There's, there's Listen, a, you are not about to give us Black Panther with traumatic brain injury. That's absolutely not happening. So, not, not, not a football player, um, Black Panther, no. Not, not a football player. <laughs> <laughs> there's just definitely moments there that they, you know, they really don't talk. Uh, and this was been, this has been mentioned before. The Watcher was at Black Panther and Storm's wedding. We know that the Watcher shows up at times of an extreme change of the timeline of the world going forward, something earth shattering and not necessarily in a bad way happens. And yet we never found out what that earth shattering moment was. It's right there. He just wanted to see history. Sticking out. <laughs> he just wanted to see history. That's he just what you say. He just, I'm just here as a guest. <laughs> Listen, I mean, you had black excellence, Mary. Black excellence, like, come on. I'm just here to see. The, I'm just here to see the black people. <laughs> have Have we seen anything like it since? There you go. I mean, I'm just saying. It was literally once in a lifetime. Literally, <laughs> <laughs> and that's why he was there. It was no, that that watcher popped up like he was getting the last plate at a family reunion. I just came to get the plate. That's it. <laughs> I, I heard great things about Wakanda. I heard great things about the food. I'm just here for the plate and for the marriage. Mm-hmm. That's it. Nothing's nothing major. Nothing to see here, folks. Nothing to see here. I'm just here to have a good time. I was like, I'm here to learn that electric slide they always talk about. That's what I'm here to do. And he did show up in slides, didn't he? He showed up in slides. The watcher <laughs> wears slides. But he also doesn't he hover? Didn't that kind of weird for to see the watcher do the electric slide? But that's really just hovering. <laughs> I believe so. <laughs> so <laughs> said, Big ass baby watcher. <laughs> so I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. So what about okay? And and Will, you know, you know this one. Ralph Dibney and his wife became ghost detectives because you know Ralph Dibney. Dibney oh, died. oh dear God, not that one. And, yeah, and they had became literally ghost detectives because anybody who could rival Batman in, in being a detective, it was the question in Ralph Dibney. Yeah, but it was it was it was good and terrible, good and terrible, and yet and yet and yet. They canceled Black Panther and the crew. Yeah, which was which was actually what. If, correct me if I'm wrong. The first run sold out. The yeah. first run of the crew sold out, and they had to they actually had to go back and put it back on reprint. Yeah, I think it was going. I think it was going for six issues. Yeah, because it was a limited series. But you know, fans were fans really did want to see more. But they were like, yeah, we're not coming back to that. What? Like, uh, just a group, of, a group of black, a group of black powerful superheroes actually getting stuff done with zero, uh, with zero casualties and zero uh, damage <laughs> to planets and cities. We can't have that. We must have destruction. Where's Michael Bay? Right. <laughs> so everybody knows who Tim Drake is. He was the third Robin. Technically fourth, if you count Stephanie Brown, but whatever, her her run was stand was short. Uh, mm-hmm. But he left to become Red Robin, mm-hmm. and we never really got a chance to get his his run due to Flashpoint. 
and it was never revisited. That was a terrible move on DC's part. Considering I'm like a red, a red Robin, a red Robin line, and the fact I think I forgot who they had lined up as the as who would have been the the villain in that. I want to say, I want to say it was Two Face, but I can't really remember. But we would have had something. I mean, it would have been good. I yeah. mean, it would have been good. It would have been great. But the people of DC, you know, they do a line and then do 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 a line and then go the roulette wheel and see what works first. Yeah, so speaking of DC and doing a lot, um, mm-hmm. their introduction of Dr. Manhattan. Yeah, Will knows where I'm going with this one. Mm-hmm. There was a character by the name of Pandora mm-hmm. who had a certain ability, and she knew that Dr. Manhattan had somehow affected the entire DCU. And when I say the DCU, I don't mean the film version, I mean the comics version. Mm-hmm. That he somehow affected it. Here's my thought on that. Because she died before she could even reveal how she knew this stuff. Mm -hmm. One, that plot line just dropped. Two, the releases of that line, of that storyline, was it wasn't even on time. No. I got two issues. I can't even tell you how many issues it was that I just told my bookstore. I said, just, I don't even want it anymore. Wasn't there like almost almost a solid month and a half between issues? Yeah. That's how bad it was. That like, that's how really bad it was. When I tell you, not only was the massive plot hole they never answered, it was like DC and its distributors were just not. It, it was like watching the end of Dipset after that one hit Wonder went away. <laughs> not you had, you had, It was like watching Cameron and Jules Santana argue over who's still going to be hot past this song. That's what it looked like. <laughs> that's turned, out it was, it was. turned out it was neither one. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm kid Kira. I kid you not. It was it was bad. It, it got so bad that the readers stopped. The readers actually stopped sending letters in. Like you usually see, read they had those reader response at the end of comics. They did one issue where the reader was like, "I'm sorry, I just have to give up off the fact that my kid is gonna be one years old before this before I get my next issue." <laughs> and it was right there. I mean, they actually had the nerve to actually print it. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> I mean, I, I respect that though. <laughs> I do respect that, but yeah. So no, I, that is, I use that that is definitely one way to get your point across. Yeah. <laughs> so now this last one is is you know, and we'll probably do. Well, I'm sure we'll come back to this because comics to this day still do this. They still. Mm-hmm. Anybody remember uh, Gotham and Gotham Girl? No. See. See. No. See, oh, no. oh, but like they just brought in these two random characters who are Superman esque, but for but they had some problems, and Batman is trying to help them. And then it seemed like the brother dies, and then the sister is strung out. On Wait, whatever. I do remember. Yeah. Oh my god, that was fucking horrible. You know, oh, that, wow, you know that was really bad. That was really <laughs> bad. Did they even <laughs> finish? They, they, they got like the idea for Gotham Knights. Yeah, they got the idea for it. Oh, shit. That was the idea for Gotham no. Knights. Well, the CW sat there and said, oh, we're going to get rid of all the Arrowverse shows, but we're going to keep this one because it's Batman without Batman. Yeah. <laughs> it was bad. Not they, had, they had not. They didn't clean that. <laughs> but this this last one, and we're, like I said, we're going to revisit this because, like I said, comics still to this day, they just drop. They, they drop plot lines. Mm-hmm. Um, With good reason. For good reason, <laughs> we're gonna go to the live action sec. Mm-hmm. And one of the <laughs> biggest, one of the biggest, and, and and Marvel does it too. So don't don't get it twisted. But the D, the previous run of the DC cinematic universe, and that's Justice League, and it gave us so many plot holes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Will. Your attention is needed in this juncture. At this um, I'm Please wait. To... I'm, I'm sorry. O- Obi, do you want a bottle? You want a bottle? <laughs> he said, "Please hold." <laughs> System <laughs> rebooting. System rebooting. <laughs> Marvel may not be able to tell a good story no more, but they should at, at least they tried to bring all their plot holes together. Ooh, just not the original. Ooh, uh, it's 
there were so many plot holes. So <laughs> many plot holes. Prior to finding out he was an act, prior to us finding out that they were a problem in real life, there was the whole Flash showing up during Bruce's nightmare dream. <laughs> there was the night actual nightmare dream that Bruce nightmare has. Scenario. You know, where it's just like, all right, is this the future? What are we what are we doing here? You know. So many plot holes. Um, if if Marvel, you know, wants to contact me, you know, do something. You know, hey, you I welcome. Oh, it. Send in your resume immediately, please. <laughs> I didn't hear what he please. said. You say it one more time. Say what you say. What you say one uh, more time. I said that um, if Marvel ever wants to contact me, you know, hey. I can. Listen, that part. <laughs> it, it's it. There were there were so many plot holes from the from the DCEU, and I'm not even. I'm not talking Man of Steel. I'm not talking BBS. I'm not talking Wonder Woman or eighty four. I'm talking <laughs> Justice League. Oh, just just that travesty of a. Of all the Snyder fanboys that still love to come to my my video game podcast and argue their points, oh, let it go, let it, let it go, guys, let it go. When is this? When is this? I gotta see this. Oh, it, when they is still video game par- pa- podcast. I gotta see this. that. That and uh, Ra the Geek, Ra the King, him, him and me, we always go back and forth over <laughs> over Justice League. He he is a Maybe? Snyder. He is a Snyder fan. Yeah, he's- and Arya, Arya's a big that fan. Be that's, that's um Geek Salad. Geek, yeah. Yeah. Geek Salad yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Love them that's guys, but Arya definitely is. <laughs> Arya definitely be on he the, the slatter tip. Die on that hill, and I, I will give him respect. He will die. On <laughs> that hill. Shout out to Geek Salad, but uh, yeah, it's definitely some moments where you're looking at that film, you're just like, there was no payoff. None. There was no payoff. I mean, even 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 in the Snyder, was it the Snyder? Yeah, it was the Snyder cut. Even in the mm-hmm. Snyder cut, when you get that that conversation between that Jared Leader's jo- uh, Jared Leto's Joker in Batman, mm-hmm. which was not a bad conversation, by the way, just in the wrong movie, just in the wrong film. Mm-hmm. You're just like, one, where was this Joker all the damn time? Uh, mm-hmm. Two. <laughs> The, the, I'm still mad about the fact he did the White Knight Joker. That's it was awesome. like you did the White Knight. You did Joker the White Knight Joker with the straight jacket. At the whole time, you're gonna give him the same speech. Well, Batman, Batman, Batman knows all about uh, losing loved ones, don't you? Yeah. And the whole time, Batman's like one word, and I will end you right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I just read this storyline. Did you just snatch this up out the book? You know, so yeah, and, and then and that was, I mean, aside from the multiple issues with Justice League, you had March and Manhunter pop up at the end. So literally, the one guy that could go toe to toe, if not with Dark Side, can go with his uncle, who y'all pretty much nerfed as a sniveling uncle. <laughs> I will praise Dark Side, but aren't you his? Okay, but you had March and Manhunter show up again. <laughs> This is what we're doing. Okay. Yeah, right. Just that's why I turned around. See, see, Kira, that's why I turned around. The moment Justice League got mentioned, I was like, uh, oh, we <laughs> them's your friends. I was gonna let you. I'm not gonna talk bad about other people's friends. Them's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk I about am, mine. No, I'm I am a, talk about somebody else. Don't get me wrong. I am a DC fan because Batman was the first comic I ever read as a kid. So I've I've always had that love for him. But we gotta that's... we gotta call. Uh, but again, it must be called out. Animated movies, DC's got it made. Live action movies. I'm going to watch some animated movies after we're done with the show. Yo, I've been yeah. actually watching. I watched Vision this week. I watched Wonder Woman this week. I watched Superman vs. Brainiac. I'm like having a great time. Yeah, like, they, these are, they have a rewatchable Traitor. factor. Yeah, <laughs> you said Traitor. Traitor. <laughs> but no, real talk. That what is it? That you Wonder Woman your, Bloodline? Was it Wonder Woman Bloodlines? Yeah, probably some of the best Wonder Woman I've seen was in battle. I mean, I mean, that's why I was saying for a lot of these movies, like I'll even go back. It's like you know, back to still one of my favorite Batman movies, Mass of the Phantasm, which is what 40, 30, 40 years old, 30, 30 years 30, old. I think it's about thirty years old. I think it's close. I mean, that's the anniversary is this year. Yeah, the anniversary is coming up, so I'm pretty sure it's thirty no. years old. 
The nineties? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The nineties. Sure. Yeah. Oh. It's, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. You know, the funny part is now that I think about it, Mask of the yeah. Fantastic was actually yeah, back the first, now, don't uh, first animated. Shut up. <laughs> oh, I really you said sore, you said sore knees, poor bad back, everything. Oh. Oh. It, 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 it just oh, my hip hurts. My neck, my back, my neck, my back. My neck and my back. Look, my neck I, my I, back. I had a, uh, I had the area I used to work in. I they call it the sterile room, and I would be bending and and bend, picking up trays and stuff all the time. It was mm -hmm. fine, and I did it one time. I did it for like twelve hours straight, you know, because I worked over. Mm -hmm. And I got home, and my wife was like, yeah, you might want to go ahead and soak for a little bit because your back might be sore. And I'm like, no, I'll be fine. Boy, the next day, I'm like, shit. Everything, everything, everything was like damage report? Batman <laughs> lied! I was just like... <laughs> <your wife. laughs> See, he was uh, like, Batman lied! He did this well into his 60s? These are lies! <laughs> Oh, but no, a it, cybernetic it, spine <laughs> under the red hood. Yeah, under the red hood did definitely get rock steady the idea for Arkham for the Arkham series. I will agree with that because they, I think Arkham Asylum came out after under the red hood, the first Arkham Asylum, then Arkham City, then uh, Arkham. Oh no, Arkham Knight was the last one. There was some Arkham there was Asylum, Arkham, Arkham City. City, Arkham. There was one where Batman was facing uh. <laughs> Batman was facing uh, what's his face? It was it was Arkham Origins. There we go. That's what <laughs> it was. Man. Arkham so Origins. The Batman the Batman. Wait a minute. Pause. Full pause. <laughs> Bam, I'm gonna need you to calm the fuck down. Real quick. You Batman, I, know you, I know you sleepy. I know you sleepy. I don't want to have the conversation at eleven oh six at night. You but are entitled you know. to you are entitled to your opinion, sir. You are entitled. I'll find you. Okay, I am. I am trying to start the Relax. reading, so I can't even wait in on this. Oh, that's what it, he says. Uh, Asylum City and Night Origins. We don't speak of. Oh, Origins was legit. Origins is not bad. Origins, Origins was good too, but I mean, Arkham Knight was that was that piece of these thoughts. That was yeah. the. That was uh, it, and I still so, want that damn Batmobile. Yeah, we. I think we need to do our next show. On, I got. Fine. I think. Oh no! I think Lloyd and Natasha come on next episode. <laughs> I think Lloyd and Natasha come on next episode. Uh, but we'll talk about it too. Uh, so we're clean, ready to close out because there's 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 a crap ton of comic book cliffhangers that are out there. Trust me, they they've been doing them since the seventies and the eighties and the nineties and early two thousands, even now. Even now, mm -hmm. look at the Ultimate Universe. There was just moments, supreme, supreme moments that they never really got back to. Never got back to. The and they're talking about and they're talking about coming back to that universe. And I'm like, so you're going to restart the universe that is no longer existing? Pretty much. Got it. Okay. Or the, uh, or, the uh, or the blue Marvel or the blue Marvel ending that never got answered. Oh my God! <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to extend it. I don't mean. I don't they, mean to. I don't they mean to really did here. that. They really did do that. The the blue Marvel ending we never got. Century fell flat. I'm just mm -hmm. saying it's, and they're trying to bring that back. We save it. How do you remember it. all of this? Hold, say, say, hold it. Hold it. Hold it for next week. <laughs> Encyclopedia, <laughs> Encyclopedia Black is what y'all called me. God, <laughs> both of y'all. Mm -mm. I don't. And even shouts to Park. I see him in the chat. I'm um, talking that too. How do y'all talking it back? The both of all y'all go to bed. It's like it's like it's like the Chronicles of Narnia. We were we was there when it was written. <laughs> look, look. I mean, we was we there's, were, look, there's, there's, even, there's even a Daredevil run that Kevin Smith started and never finished. Pretty much, and it was good. Yeah, that was recent, recent ish, sure. Mm -hmm. And it was a good, and actually was a good series. But you yeah. know, they didn't want they want they don't want to get the fat man to shine. <laughs> so we're getting ready to get out of here. I uh, see you, Bama. <laughs> Bama's, Bama's gonna catch Let's the go. <laughs> oh, uh, so Marcus, tell everybody where they can find you. Yeah, so you guys can find me on my Instagram, uh mvj.comics, and you can learn more about the comic book to Saint of Tour, The Battle for New Orleans. Um, there's like 70 hours left of the Kickstarter. Um Get on 
Yeah. People get on that. Get on mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Pass the word please. around. Get on that. Actually, actually, please, actually go on your socials and start linking that on your socials so this can actually happen because it is absolutely mm-hmm. needed. Right. Don't go and to bed and forget chat. about it, it in the morning. It's in the chat. It's in the chat for the third time. Please. <laughs> so there's no excuse that it y'all didn't know. It don't take much. It will, it you know, take like a telephone. Our, our operators are standing by now. Exactly. Yeah, you, you, you <laughs> even get um, you even get a lot of things when you are different tiers too. I was looking at that. Dude, the the thirty five dollars, the one that I'm looking at, I'm I'm good. I I plan on giving more, but the thirty five dollars alone, mm-hmm. you get a lot. I'm on it. I'm mm-hmm. on it. Getting a lot. I am on it. Oh, Marcus, man, I I got to give you this because just the artwork and the writing and just all of that alone and bringing that to life is. Beautiful. I gotta give you this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My friends, <laughs> we are looking forward to more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh man, this door is open anytime. You can always hit me up, man. Whenever you got a new project, just want to chat it out with us. I hope we made you feel comfortable. Oh, uh, yeah, well. no, I feel fine. Yeah. <laughs> We got, we got you mellowed out. I told you, we we got you, we got you. We don't we don't bite. You come on the next time. You're gonna be talking. We're gonna let you. Well, ooh, por- wait. Can you speak Portuguese? Who yeah, will? Yeah. yeah, no, man. Throw that in there. Whatever you want to. This is <laughs> yeah. second language. English is actually my second. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Whenever, ooh. man. Just let us know, man. Just yeah. you know, you know where to find me. Yeah. yeah man. So, all right, Lady Mandalore, talk to the people. Please. Hi, good evening. I am Ooh. very close to the camera. <laughs> um, <laughs> good evening. So, Lady Mandalore is my name. You can also find me on Instagram at Roomful of Blurs. I'm learning very much, as you can see. Um, you can find me on Instagram. You can find me at on Sundays live, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube and on Twitch, um, where I bring on lesser known uh, um content creators, artists, and the like, um, and try to give them a little bit of boost. Uh, you can also find me on TikTok as a uh, child of Mandalore, uh, where I also have uh, some of my voice acting stuff posted up on there, just in case anybody's looking. And um, <laughs> I have a podcast of the same name, but I actually talk about the history of Mandalore, where I also do a little bit of voice acting on there too. The first Saturday of every month, I have an audio chat room on Fanbase. Anyone and everyone is invited. Please come through. We talk about everything um, that's happened within the last month or even stuff that you want to bring up. Um, that's a little bit older, but it's still a goodie, like this um, um, uh, Montgomery Tea Party uh, yeah, that we yeah, had yeah. recently. We gonna talk the about Alabama, the Alabama Slam, oh, the Alabama yeah. Sweet Tea Party. Alabama Slam. Oh, yeah, the Alabama Sweet Tea Party. Yeah. The fade. <laughs> In the water. Fade in the water. Yes, Fade's giving. Fade in the water. <laughs> <laughs> Grill or grill or whore Lanny from Geek by Heart. Talk to the people. Hey, what's up? I am Lanny from Geek by Heart. Me and my husband run Geek by Heart on YouTube. We talk about movies. We talk about trailer reviews. And Jay is actually going to be streaming every Saturday between 10 and 12. He is going to be doing God of War right now. He's going through the Greek pantheon. He's at God of War 3. Then he's going to be doing God of War 2018. And then finally, God of War riding around. So check him out on his series. He streams every week on Saturdays, 10 to 12. You can find me at um, um, Geek by Heart on IG. You can find me on TikTok, Geek by Heart. And you can find me writing for The Man of the Wall, Blurred Eye View, talking about horror all day long, all night long. And I just say, make sure that you do what you love. It is never too late, too late to do what you love. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Our engineer, the one who, who power lifts space warp engines and 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 is very modest about it uh black fox like the black <laughs> oh lord i was, I was going to I was gonna, help lying. I was gonna help lenny i was like she watches horror movies so you don't have to i was ready you to can. 
You can. I, was, I forget to say that. <laughs> I was waiting for that moment of just that, that movie voice, but I can only do it so many times. But yes, uh, I am black. I am Black Spartan. Otherwise, I was Black Box Four Four Seven on all socials. I usually do reviews on everything that I read, that I watch, that I play, and gym stuff because I'm trying to stay in shape. I'm trying to live, people. I'm trying to live. I'm trying to live right. Well. But not according to Jehovah's Witnesses. But anyway, <laughs> that also being said, I do a couple podcasts of my own, guys. Of course, my daily news political podcast called How the Frack We Got Here every Wednesday and Saturday. Uh, my video game podcast called Get Bit Podcast every Friday. Both shows are always on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. And you can find my podcast anywhere that you can watch or see or, or, do, it, or do a combination of, however you feel about it. I am also one of the many heads of the Blurs.view.org site for writing articles. Mine is for wrestling. Why? Because wrestling is real and people are fake. Shout out to Mr. Kennedy for that one. Um, aside from that, guys, I usually sit there and say, uh, much like our esteemed uh, comic book writer in the room along with us, please share, please support, please do whatever you can to help somebody else that's trying to do something different, whether it's a comic book, a podcast, a show, or anything of that nature. Again, show some support. If you can donate, cool. But again, a share is free. Support them the same way you would support Beyonce if you knew you existed. At the same time, guys, we are in con season, so I always say there are always three rules I love for people that go about when they go to cons. Number one, respect the cosplayer at all times. These people actually go out there to put on their best in fandoms, and they deserve to be treated like every other body else that comes there just to have fun and speak fandoms. Again, respect all cosplayers. Number two, wash your ass. Uh, soap and water, soap and things of that nature are still available for two bucks at any travel place at any location of stores, whether it's Walmart, Piggly Wiggly, or the guy that runs that convenience store that also sells those shoes that have just disappeared in two days. You know what stores I'm talking about. Don't get judgmental. You get your wigs from there. That also being said, um, Number three is the same rule that I go by, the same rule that you should go by at every con. Simply put, be nice, be polite, and most importantly, don't be a dick, and we'll all be cool. I, 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 just, I honestly <laughs> thought you was going to go wash your ass. Uh, but that, that too. That too. Uh, so, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for checking us out. Thank you for showing your support. Number one on the list is going to be done really soon. Blurred's Eye View will be having a Patreon. We will have behind the scene things that you will not get to see live and will not be on the YouTube channel. So you will be able to show your support. We also have merch coming. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Tafar I said, hey, put, this, put the seedlings out there. So the seedlings are out there. We just got to start watering them. Uh, but show your love by going to the IG page, Blur's Eye View, right all there. And you'll find the link tree in the bio. It'll lead you to all the places where you find us to all the great places uh shout out to always press record you can watch us on always press record.com through amazon or roku fire uh you also want to show your love on the youtube channel why you get all these great pieces and interviews that we're posting up and snippets and the whole nine you're gonna have fun trust me uh and you're gonna laugh and you're gonna learn something and you're gonna be encouraged by doing more by just like we like like our guest was here tonight um you also don't want to cut things short like they did with black panthers running jungle action because i should know i have that fucking series and it was one of the best series shout out to don mcgregor and <laughs> that was a great series and they I cut feel it like off. i never hear you curse that is crazy uh, they cut it off right at they literally they literally changed creative teams right after the kkk issue Yes, and they that hanged it afterwards. They they yeah. painted it afterwards. It was it was, so, it was perfect. perfect. It was it was perfect. It it was it was what what was it, Homelander? Oh, I gotta tell you, it was perfect. Perfect, everything down to the last minute details. Carrie, you can come back. <laughs> <laughs> they, they took. <laughs> they took it from us uh, but yeah show your love on there shout out to Otaku Noir we are a proud affiliate of Otaku Noir just type in Blurred's Eye View when you sh when you are clocked when you're, sh when you're cashing out <laughs> that's what it is when you're, you're when you're going to Otaku Noir the number one blurred blind box mystery company bam I got it uh, just go type in Blurred's Eye View for your shipping code and you'll get free shipping off of Blurred's Eye View, the code. Uh, they have some dope stuff. They've already said they want to work with Marcus. They're already working with Stranger Comics. They got a lot of stuff coming up. 
you want to get on those boxes that they have you will not be disappointed they have some great okay. great product done by blurs and P pocs uh from all stages with some of the greatest books t-shirts toys cereal boxes uh <laughs> cereal sounds kind of good right now Go ahead, <laughs> all that great stuff but you want to check them out you want to show your love and go support go to that kickstarter it's up there it's in the chat check it out it's in the description for the show please show your love he's got less than three days go over there get that we need more product like this out there on the shelves in the in the in the shipping containers wherever it is you can get it you need it you need it look at me mm -hmm. <laughs> You need it. You want it. Go, you need go, it. Right go, you go want put, it. get your money up. Get your money don't, up. Don't make me put Lady Mandalore on your ass. I'll you find you. Want it. <laughs> Come on, well, we all doing it. We all doing it. <laughs> I'm too. I'm too old to be doing zoom ups. I'm too old. To <laughs> don't do that to yourself. No, that means you need to do it even more. So we need the backup. Yeah, right. <laughs> Be like a half, be like a, be like a stretched out pit bull in this camera. I'm <laughs> that then let him, let him see it. <laughs> Put the fear in him. Uh, but once again, I want to thank our guest Marcus V. Jardim, uh, for such a dope looking series. We got your back, man. Uh, and for the listeners and for the readers out there, go check out the Kickstarter. You will not be disappointed. This is history in the making. This is some yes. great art. This is some great writing. You want this? You need this? Please show your support. This is how you get more things by us for us to spread that message out there to get the truth out there on top of that. So mm -hmm. uh, go show your support. Go go over there and get some of that action. Uh, but like we do every show, remember to educate yourself and others, entertain yourself and others and encourage yourself and others. Thank you for our guests and this dope crew. We will see you Tuesday at 830 p.m. Eastern on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch and Thursdays at 9 p.m. Same channels. Ah, uh, this ship is taking off. I hope you had a good time. I know we did. We will see you soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs>